very good morning to one and all. So on behalf of uh, Value Education Cell SRM ISD, I welcome you all for this uh, management development program uh, on universal human values. This is sec section 16. This is an online session. The agenda is to have the uh, discussion on the list of assignment which is being given. And uh, from our end, SRM site, we have our Vice Chancellor, sir, with us. Uh, very warm welcome to you, sir. And we have all our, uh, we have a uh, Pro Vice Chancellor and uh, additional register, madam. And I welcome all the deans, directors, and head of the departments and USP coordinators. My sincere gratitude to all, all of you for supporting us amidst of uh, busy schedule for past two weeks. We have a lot of discussion about the assignments which has been given. So I welcome you all. And uh, I welcome our AICT team, uh, Dr. Rajneesh Arora, the chairman of AICT NCC IP committee, and Professor H.D. Charan, sir, a chairman of NC UHV, a former vice chancellor of BTU uh, University, Rajasthan. And I welcome our resource person, uh, Dr. Kumar Shamba, head of the institution, UP uh, Institute of Design of Design Noda. And I welcome our uh, uh, resource person, Rajal Astana Ji, a vice chairman, uh, NCUHV, is a former director of IRC, Punjab Technical University. And I also welcome in Umesh Jadav Bhaya and Jitendra Bhaya and Gauri Shankar Bhaya for joining us today. And uh, as a whole, I welcome all the uh, members present over here. So today's agenda is, first we have a discussion on uh, takeaways of the 15 groups. Uh, we had uh, 15 groups. And then there will be a discipline-wise consolidation vision will be shared by the discipline heads. And we, UHV shall have few takeaways to be shared and followed by recommendation from AICT team for 20 minutes. And finally, we have a guidance from our vice chancellor, sir. So with this, I, I welcome you all for the meeting. So the purpose of this uh, meeting is to share the vision of holistic value-based education and uh, the importance of the universal human values. And to assist the SRM in developing its plan and the program for this UHV, and how this holistic value-based education can be implemented. The program overview of the core content of the UHV and the glimpse of work done so far and what is the future potential for the same. And the tutorials related to the core content in how it is related to one's life. So many of our participants are going to share about their experiential validation on the proposal which has been shared. And the assignments has been uh, given, that is to reinforce the core content. And assignment has been shared to develop the plans and program to implement this UHB and the holistic value-based SRM, uh, holistic value-based education at SRM. So the MDP, it's a MDP has, it is a process of a dialogue, initiating a dialogue and strengthening the self-exploration process so this is what we have learned in the whole MDP, how to strengthen and develop our self-exploration process. So with this, uh, we are here to we hear from you all the key takeaways and about the future plans for SRM. Over to you, Baya. Rajul Baya. Baya, your mic is unmuted. Say mute. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so welcome uh, everyone. Um, our program, yeah, please go uh, and I'll take over this this one. Okay. Our program today is in six sections. First one is uh, the takeaways as they are compiled by the 15 groups. We'll spend about 40 minutes on that. Anybody who's uh, 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 remaining from that we will do in section six, which is uh, where, where we will be having a little bit of more flexibility. Then we will have the consolidation of the vision and plans of the four disciplines um, uh, for about 40 minutes each. So each uh, uh, consolidation will be about 10 minutes. The third part is the observations and takeaways of the UHV cell and the organizing team. Uh, they have spent a whole lot of time in you know, uh, organizing this. So we'll hear their takeaways also. Then the recommendations of the UHV team or the NCCIP 
uh, from AICT will share our recommendations. And then we would like to hear from uh, the VC and other uh, seniors who are here. Um, so that's the broad plan for today. And at this point, I would request Muthabi uh, Chalwanji, uh, if this is okay, uh, if your time is flexible, otherwise we will, you know, try to con uh, make it more concise. Uh, I'm okay with that, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Do you have any uh, next meeting that is already scheduled? Uh, Where... No, that's at one o'clock only. So I have. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for joining us. I think it is something very, um, very fortunate for all of us that uh, you are here and. Uh, We'd certainly like you to hear the takeaways before you give your observations and your blessings and your guidance. So, this is the pleasure. pleasure. Yeah. So, now um, in the medical unit, there were two groups made of five individuals each uh, Dr. Ashma and Dr. Suman will share the takeaways of their groups. The section one of the assignment was, what was this MDP in your own words? What was it for you? So that is one part. Then the second part is the key takeaways from the core content that your group could explore and include some specific real life incidents which indicate that uh, these explorations uh, led to some change in your life. So that uh, is the second part. And this is reinforced here with the interesting incidents that might have taken place during the MDP. And if the time remains, uh, then we can share the, share the uh, other observations also, other suggestions. Uh, but we would like you to focus on these first three points or first two points to be more right? And since the time is very limited, 40 minutes, uh, we would request you to be mindful of the time. Uh, so please go ahead, uh, uh, Dr. Ashmari. Welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, for uh, the PPT, I'll have to share the screen. Is it okay? Yeah, if you want to share the PPT, you have three minutes. I will yes, stop yes, sharing yes. from here. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah. You can stop sharing, uh, Suprajaji. Yeah. you are muted. Is my screen visible? Yes, yes, it is visible. Please go just ahead. Please go. Yeah, well, just a minute. I'll not take. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Ashma, Associate Professor, Department of Anatomy, presenting on behalf of the Medical and Health Sciences Team Group One. I was asked to present the key, uh, key takeaways from the UHV program, a compilation from the team. Thanks to my team members for their genuine contribution. Now, the first key takeaway for our group is starts from me. It's starting with self. So that is what we began in the UHV. My key takeaway is minimalism. The awareness of difference between need and greed dawned immediately when we were asked to count the number of clothes we have. This simple task made me see that we have to meet our needs and not our wants. Following this session, when I spoke to my sister, this has actually happened, okay? When I spoke to my sister regarding the accumulation of anything materialistic excessively, she had 800 and odd saris. She couldn't com complete accounting it. And she donated 200 saris to an NGO for destitute women in Chennai. And I was very happy to have contributed in a very small way. And I really thank this UHV MDP program for awakening this in me so i am actually by nature a very minimalistic person i don't accumulate so much of clothes so when i knew somebody who's doing it and i told them and she also promised that they will she will not for, buy anything more till you no know, she has really reached that point where she has to really buy clothes so this is one from the self then the next thing from self extending to the family the next key takeaway from our team especially the male members satya sir 
Thinakaran sir, John sir, and my husband, Dr. Arul Saravanan, was the decision to spend more time with the family. As females, we definitely spend more time with the children, kids in the family, but male members, somehow they get occupied with the work, but they decided they'll spend more family time. Not just time, but quality time. That is what was very essential. So watching TV together as a family is definitely not quality time, but they decided they will spend quality time talking with the spouse and children, discussing what happened that day. Does anybody want to share anything with them? And them sharing their uh, takeaways, so uh, their day, how was it? So that was really nice for us. And uh, definitely we see these changes in our families and our own children and elders are very happy about it. This is one very great thing which has happened through the UHB. Thank you so much. Then that is for, from our team only. Then the next third key takeaway from our team is mindfulness of, of the environment. This was mainly instigated by our pharmacology HOD, Jamuna Rani Madam. After the UHV program, she raised the question of disposal of medicines after expiry date. She quoted how the vultures, which are the natural scavengers, are dying because of the irresponsible disposal of drugs. I am sure all of us would have done this. Expiry date, okay, throw it in the dustbin. What's the point? Did you even realize what was happening to those drugs? Who was going to take it? How these, how the environment is getting polluted? So this was this really dawned on us after this UHV program. And we have planned to work on it. Definitely our institution is having a proper disposal. But what about our households? So we decided we will be mindful of the environment and anything we do, will we will see to it. If it will not affect the environment, at least minimize the uh, bad effects on the environment. That is our key takeaway. And fourth key takeaway is kindness towards all beings. So this is extension from this is widely propagated by our biochemistry HOD even before she uh, went through this MDP. So biochemistry HOD, Vinodini Madam is a vegan and a lover of animals. And after this UHV program, we could definitely relate with her, with her feelings. And not just self, not just the other human, but every life in this planet matters, no matter how big or small. This feeling of oneness of self with nature and all lives is a major takeaway from the UHV program. So our takeaways, because of the want of time, I've really minimized it to just four. If I have to tell, I will have to speak for more than an hour. I don't want to I know, bore you with that. So I would like to thank my teammates for their inputs and thank the UHV cell for the beautiful MDP program. Thank the resource persons for their patience and instilling so much of values in us. And we are sure we will continue to explore. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, madam. Yeah, thank you, Ashwani. <clears throat> uh, Namaste, ji. Namaste, Namaste. Nice to see you with Rajul Bhaiya. <laughs> Thanks for joining with us today. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Suman ji. Uh, Dr. Suman. Manma, can you please uh, start your sharing? Yeah, we, your mic is unmuted, but we can't hear you. Suman, ma'am, we can't be able to hear you. Yeah, okay. So we'll come back to uh, Sumanji uh, after some time. Uh, then we'll go to engineering and technology group. Uh, there were sev seven groups uh, in engineering and technology. About 35 participants attended. Uh, so we'll invite... Uh, uh, who all are uh, parts? Uh, who are uh, sharing Lakshmi, in this? Lakshmi, uh, ma'am, is uh, to start with. Yes. Lakshmi. Okay, Dr. Lakshmi. Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah, good yes. Morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, yes, everyone. Oh. We thank uh, the management for providing us the wonderful opportunity to attend this um, wonderful program. And uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity provided to me to consolidated, consolidate our uh, team's view. It, and the present here, our uh, team's view, our team com comprises of Dr. Vijay Kumar. Sorry, I don't have a presentation. I just uh, 
So Dr. Vijay Kumar, Dean, e e e Electrical and Electronics, as well as HOD of Tripoli. Dr. Murali, Head of Mechatronics Department. Dr. Nazir, Head of Department of Biotechnology. Dr. Madhusudan, Head of uh, Career Development Center. And I'm consolidator, uh, consolidating here everyone's view. First uh, uh, thing which we learn from the uh, uh, UHV is um, right understanding, right feeling, and physical facility. How much important should uh, we should give for all these things? So less importance, uh, actually, as Madam told, uh, needs and wants that we were able to identify. It, and uh, we try to implement that uh, in, in, the, in our Diwali celebration itself. So what is the based on the need? We purchased uh, cloths as well as uh, crackers. As Madam suggested, we also have the responsibility to take care of our uh, nature. So wherever is uh, need is not there, we have not done the purchase. It is the entire team's um, uh, no contribution uh, 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 for this Diwali. And uh, most of us shared our happiness with the uh, near and dears as well as to the needy. And many of us contributed um, uh, to the uh, society through the NGOs who help the uh, needy people. So that is one of the takeaways from this um, uh, UHV. Another one is uh, what we uh, came, what we learned is um, lending ear is better than uh, talking mouth. That is what told by the Kumarji. So lending ears is more needed. So whenever a student or a, a faculty comes with a problem, because we are all in the management, I mean, uh, decision making level. So whenever a student comes with the problem, instead of having a preconditioned thoughts, uh, now we were able to uh, know, uh, listen to their views, open minded, so that we can provide a proper solution or a proper um, you know judgment for their uh, problems. That is one one takeaway from this. Another is. Um, Another takeaway is um, uh, trust, right? So this is uh, this uh, incident was shared by Dr. Murali, sir. So the trust, uh, when we attended the MDP, he had a program to be organized and he gave a, a, a faculty responsibility for that particular program to be conducted. So the, since the total trust was given to them, the, prop, the event was conducted successfully and uh, uh, in a proper way. So the trust leads to responsibility. That is one of the takeaways. So when we trust our faculty, definitely the work uh, given or the uh, contribution done by them is 100%. So trust leads to responsibility. That is also one takeaway. And uh, uh, another takeaway is um, uh, under one incident is, uh, which we learned that is lending year is uh, very important is uh, usually this is for myself. So usually when I call uh, my parent, uh, uh, I just take uh, how are you and uh, like that. So now what I'm doing is uh, I'm talking to my mother and asking her to narrate uh, what happened the whole day. Because uh, now uh, she is very happily explaining what happened uh, the whole day. So somebody is there to listen. So that is one of the takeaway from this image. So we should uh, you know, not only uh no talk uh, we should also listen properly so that is even that we is practicing in our house so that whenever children comes from office or home they explain whatever happened they narrate so that uh, gives a completeness in the family also this is one of the takeaway not by me alone by entire team of our uh, group and um and one uh, uh, understanding what we got is this uh, UHV, when we teach uh, children, uh, it is not teaching. Uh, we have to practice ourselves. So actually, I uh, saw this values or should be caught, not taught. So we have to practice. So one uh, uh, thought process which came is uh, in our 21 regulation, we have community connect program, community connect uh, in fourth semester and UHV, uh, UHV 2 in our third semester. So why not the students who are all uh, taking this UHV 2 in community connect, community connect, they need to go to the NGO and they should serve there and come with a certification and they should present in the end of uh, fourth, uh, fifth semester beginning, fourth semester they will go. So instead of going to the NGO, we can select a few schools and uh, these students who ever completes UHV 3, they can go and teach in the schools for this uh, school children or they can practice that in the school children. So instead of just telling the 
students we will make the students to do it uh, by practice also that is one of the uh, understanding which we got how to implement in our uh, curriculum uh, so these are all the things which i want to inform and anything is left over my team member can also consolidate sir vijay kumar sir murali sir nazir sir madhusudan sir anything to be added yes and uh, uh, once again we have we have uh, yes. uh, we would certainly like to hear from you and uh, the time is really, uh, limited so we will keep the time after the formal part for everyone to share we'll be here for a long time to be okay. so, so nice thank you your, thank you so nice to hear your you know real takeaways and they are applicable to your life and you are uh, able to see that it is relevant for the next generation also so and you have a responsibility it's such a beautiful thought nice thank you thank you thank you sir thank you the uhv team for providing this opportunity thank you thank you so much for the sharing so now i invite uh, rambia ma'am from genetics chori to share their uh, group presentation sorry prasanna devi ma'am sorry sir prasanna devi ma'am from group 2 over to you yeah yes sir good morning one and all uh, ma'am ppt is not required no ma'am i can just go ahead yeah please please go ahead with the press uh presentation is it no ma'am go ahead with the sharing please okay no need okay, of ppt ma'am just go ahead uh, with your my team members fine fine i am not presenting ma'am yeah uh, good morning once again my team members the doctor dt uh, dr Ganesh sir, Prof. Head of Aerospace Department, Kavi Nair, Prof. Head of EFL Department, Dr. Roop Chandra, Associate Professor for Biotechnology, and myself, Professor and Head from the CSC Department. So I'd like to thank my team members for giving the valuable uh, inputs for consolidating the uh, takeaways for this uh, UHV team. So the first key takeaway was given by Prof. Ganesh sir. so he has uh, uh, implemented you know, spoken about the trust and intention and the confidence which he has correlated with an incident that happened in his uh, work environment uh, uh, sir has mentioned that uh, he called for a meeting and made his team understand that in the workplace confidence is very essential and he for attention to his professional intentionalities are actually to have confidence in their work she observed that there is a significant change prashna ma'am actually your voice is breaking ma'am yeah prashna ma'am prashna ma'am you're not audible prashna ma'am you're not audible Prasna ma'am, we can come back to Prasanna ji after the next one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Shall I go ahead, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Please, please proceed. Uh, very good morning to all the members. I am representing uh, the group three. Uh, our team members are uh, Professor. Operations and all, but later after this Thank meeting you. was conducted, he said that uh, uh, there are significant changes in his team. So he has ultimately concluded that trust is the secret weapon. And uh, that has helped her to focus on the. uh uh ma'am your voice is so breaking uh, we couldn't able what? to hear pro what is na ma'am actually your voice is breaking in the middle ma'am so we couldn't able oh, to get she means to say that in ice by living such the way by the third key day is uh, given by myself when i discussed yeah Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please proceed. Oh, the second key take. Uh, did you hear? 
Yeah, okay. So Roop Chandra Madam uh, gave a takeaway that uh, she took a time out to count the number of clothes she had in her wardrobe. The clothes which made her realize the awareness of abundance. So after uh, knowing the abundance of clothing she possessed, she took a moment to reflect on the fact that she had enough of garments to meet her daily needs and even more than that. So that mindful consumption was the key takeaway of uh, Dr. Roop Chandra. Key takeaway that is uh, proposed by me. So it was nothing but if all uh, if all of us do one random act of kindness daily, we must just uh, we can set the world in the right direction, which means that um, we should at least ensure one key. I mean, one kindness every day. So, and one more key takeaway that was given, uh, I mean, proposed by me in my assignment was uh, uh, when we have accumulated the physical facility, when people start engaging in philanthropy and uh, support social causes, it will definitely provide assistance to vulnerable people. So at least one act of uh, kindness should be uh, done every day. So this is the key takeaway proposed by myself. And the fourth key takeaway was given by Dr. Kavita Nair. She has mentioned that from the day of completing UHV classes, she started ensuring that her communication, daily communication, reflects the principles and respects that she has cultivated during the UHV sessions. And she's very mindful of her language. So mindful language is a change that she has observed right from the day of uh, completion of UHV till date. And that she says that uh, uh, being mindful of her own words and that has got a great impact on her leadership skills. So these are the four key takeaways proposed by my team, which is my uh, group two of engineering and technology. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank ma you all. Thanks for sharing all your group key takeaways. Uh, uh, over to you, Ramya ma'am, for your group presentation. Very good morning to all the members. I am representing Group 3 of Engineering and Technology. Our team members are Professor uh, Vairamani, Dean School of Bioengineering, Professor Cherladan, HOD Mechanical Department, Professor Ravichandran, HOD Civil Department, and Professor Uma Mugeshwari, CSC Department, Ramabram Campus. Uh, this UHU program taught us to inward analyze, to turn inward and analyze ourselves to attain harmony. Uh, UHV MDP program helped us to achieve happiness and the harmony as we started practicing the following five concepts daily. So the first concept, the takeaway concept is right understanding. The right understanding is achieved through empathy. Uh, after this program, we insist on looking into the people with the more empathy uh, because whether it is a love or hatred, like two sides of the coin, it creates equal reactions from both the sides. So if we understand this, we evaluate ourselves before uh, reacting. So this uh, uh, now uh, UHV MTP program at fixed and automated uh, alarm in our site. So whatever reactions are happening, now uh, we are uh, looking into for one second and we'll relate the concepts with the UHV MTP program and uh, we understand, then we are reacting it. And the second key takeaway concept is integrity. It means others like or like me. So as natural acceptance starters, everyone has good intentions towards themselves and others. So we started hearing from others, understanding others. And uh, after, uh, after this course, we started admitting our mistakes as well. And a uh, few of our members uh, mentioned that few students who are uh, lagging in their attendance, they took them for a coffee, they sat with them, and uh, that given them an understanding of oh, this faculty or a professor is doing the right thing for me. There is no discussion on why the attendance is reduced or whatever it is, but the student felt a comfort zone with the faculty. From the, now onwards, uh, the student is coming to the classes regularly. This is one such small uh, changes that we observed. And another one is respect and responsibility. So the, with the previous concept of integrity, we believe in the concept of natural acceptance and abundance. So we started with few incidences where happened. Uh, we, uh, we started respecting our co-workers. We started celebrating the Diwali or Puja celebrations with the non-teaching faculty as well as with our students. So now they, they feel it very recognized and uh, they, they are ready to work even the extended hours also as well. And another one more thing, one of the group member mentioned is faculty and student work acknowledgement, whatever they have done, 
great job good job or uh, we we used to post some messages as an encouraging message that provided them the responsibility for them to be part of the department or the family and appreciate the family members this we are lagging uh, because usually we used to prepare the food we expect others to uh, greet us but now we are uh, saying the other way oh you have done a good job so this is after a uh, mdp program we started doing it and uh, next one is happiness uh, during the diwali celebrations this is of my personal experience i was reminded of uhc principle of natural acceptance and abundance i explained to my family that the caste or brand doesn't come under real happiness at the moment they also thought about it i hope in the upcoming festivals they will realize it after looking at me because they have to follow somebody so i have to be the uh, person they they have to follow me hereafter so i could see some small changes in them next one is fairness and justice so this is very very important in uh, maintaining a, a good relationships for this uh, we ensured a transparency in the departmental works either the allocation of work or the purchase or whatever it is this helped me to take the to make the faculty to take the ownership of the uh, department or the school or the university so uh, and summary usp mdp transformed us a lot whatever activity we do we now we pass for a second so this is the very important takeaway because now we are thinking what we have to do this is this is not been done earlier and uh, this has a profound impact on attaining a cordial relationship in the workplace as well as among the family members uh, we are uh, frequently looking for more programs like this to improve our understanding and remind ourselves of the concepts which are learned i would like to thank all the group members they have with whoever they have provided a very good examples and uh, valuable points for this meeting thank you Thank, thank you, thank you Ramaji. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. So nice. Thank you. Uh, uh, some of the things that were said are for self-exploration, yeah. and uh, I can see that uh, you have actually uh, converted the them into what to do and what not to do in a very nice way. So so nice. But, thank you. Sir. Uh, we have to go back to the understanding part. Uh, in uh, you know, we can keep exploring. So nice. Thank you for sharing. Uh, so, Prajaji, there is. Uh, Can we call? You know, a little, little, little bit of time is there now. Ten minutes, ten twelve minutes are there. So, let's uh, see how you can, uh, you know, include the other two groups also. Yes, yes, Baya. The other two groups we have three participants. So, can we call Varshni Kartik, ma'am? And yeah, yeah, please. Varshni, ma'am, over to you. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Vashay. all. Um, th I thank the management, uh, the UHV cell of the institute and the resource persons uh, for the uh, opportunity given. Uh, we are from the G4 team of VNT uh, and the teammates are Dr. Shanti Prince, Dr. Artanareshwari, Dr. Kartigan, Dr. Vijay Raghavan and I am Vashni Kartik. Uh, I would be representing my uh, team uh, in telling you the uh, few uh, key takeaways that we had from the MDP program. But to start with uh, the key takeaways which I listed or would, which I would be talking about uh, covers the whole umbrella uh, of the UHV starting from self, family, society to nature. So regarding self, uh, the takeaway is that mind is the weapon and there should be self-realization and management. Uh, the For example, we have started to list down uh, what we really, as a person, what we really would love to do and what gives us happiness. What are the challenges we are facing? At what situations certain things challenge us and what are our weaknesses? So when we are able to balance this uh, uh, this list, uh, when we are becoming self-aware of what uh, gives us happiness and what challenges us, we would be very clear and it is only from the self that the human values radiate either to the family or to the society. So that is uh, the key takeaway for the self. And then for the family, the key takeaway is time and efforts are keys to harmony and peace. Um, 
as other members uh, said, we we take the family members for granted because we always are with them. But a very special uh, uh, effort which is taken to spend time with them, a quality time. For instance, if we are, uh, if a thing which a family member does is not of great interest to us. Uh, but the family member is interested in doing that particular work or that particular hobby. So just sitting along with them and trying to involve ourselves in that actually builds up a lot of trust in the relationship. It, it's just like, okay, she's putting some effort. He's putting some effort in our work. So uh, giving a lot of time and effort to the family or to the uh, or to something which is actually not of our interest as well it builds up a lot of trust and that in, indirectly will build up a lot of harmony and peace in the family so this is the second takeaway and uh, again with the society because we are uh, de dealing with a lot of students and with a lot of faculty members with the society we have two key, uh, key takeaways the first one is that intentions versus competence and giving a right understanding so this is, uh, as I previously know, uh, pointed out, this is a very important uh, uh, important point while we come at, uh, while it is with handling students and with uh, the uh, co faculty. Now every time we do not see the intention. I mean, we uh, we mistake that it is an intention that causes a a problem. So if we are able to find out that it is only the lack of competence of that person, for instance, if there's a procedure laid out in the department of submitting leave through an email only, but there's a faculty who constantly keeps messaging the uh, the leave request. Now, after multiple times, although we, we think that you know, the faculty is trying to irritate, why can't they just understand the procedure which is laid down? But we think that intention is irritation, okay? But it is not that. The, the competence of grasping the requirement or grasping the need was not there. So if we could have a one-to-one -one talk with the faculty saying that this is why this is the procedure is laid down. So it solved it in a way. So uh, understanding the intention and the competence is very important. Uh, so that right understanding will help us a lot and that uh, builds up a lot of relationship. And the next takeaway is get back to basics, respect and gratitude. Now, this uh, respect, the word uh, is a give uh, give and take, right? Only if we give, we can take and it has got nothing to do with power. So the, it's basically, uh, you can, you can, you need not, uh, like respect is not somebody, uh, uh, a student or a new faculty or somebody down the cadre wishing us. So it is like when you initiate the, uh, the, the wish or when you initiate a smile for the first time you look at a person for the day, then that actually entirely changes the environment. So when there's a st student gang in the lift, if you see them smile and say, how was your day? What did you do today? Uh, how is your project going on? So that makes a lot of difference. We usually think students have to wish faculty, all that. So when you break that uh, uh, monotony, like that, that has a lot of impact. We could really feel that the environment has changed. There's a lot of uh, give and take. The same with faculty also. So respect is at, at least like me, listening to them as other members pointed, giving a full year, listening to them without any judgment. Okay, let them finish. So that is a big thing which I, I personally learned. Listening to others fully uh, is a very big takeaway. And then gratitude, again, that is very important. As uh, Ramya Ma'am said, acknowledging a work, okay, with a lot of gratitude, even a thank you with utmost sincerity will, will go a long way in building a relationship. So uh, these, these are the takeaways for the society. And for the last one, the nature. Nature is a therapist. Um, so as this, uh, this combines a lot of points. But where we have started implementing is that uh, a, very, a very small plant in the office space would actually help us uh, see it grow. The new leaves that come out every day of the plant, a small pot in your office table will actually give you a lot of peace, okay? It, it, whenever you look at it while you're working, there's a lot of peace and this is my personal experience. So like that, uh, a very small deed, not that uh, we have to like protect nature, all that, that is a big uh, deal. So but to start with growing small plants and then uh, uh, forgoing that fancy plastic bags that we carry, uh, uh, get, taking cloth bags uh, mandatory when you go shopping all these things are small things but it would go a long way and when you try to again by practice when you show your family members and friends I think that is where the change would start so these are the uh, key takeaways to mention 
from the MDP program. I hope I have consolidated the few points that I have gathered from uh, my teammates. Hope I did justice uh, in the way they have shared to me also. Uh, thank you uh, to all my teammates for giving those valuable inputs. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for sharing the whole consolidation of uh, group four uh, with all the four levels. So thank you. Uh, Baya, what can we do now? Like uh, we pass for engineering and can we? Yeah, I think uh, we will come back to engineering after the full session is over. Unless okay. uh, uh, you know, everybody agrees to that, I think we will pass it. Uh, okay. We will go to one more sharing or two more sharing, small sharings. And then okay. go to the uh, uh, plans, the consolidated plans. Okay, so we from... can have one from science and humanities and one from uh, okay, fine. admin. Admin, okay, fine. Um, for for right now, everybody. we will come back to them. Sure, ma'am, sure. So, uh, either Prakash sir or Shivasanta sir, any one of you can uh, go with the presentation? And yes, ma'am. About... Yes, yes. ma'am. This is Dr. Prakash from uh, Economics Department. I'm going to consolidate. Uh, uh, FNH uh, reports. Uh, the important, uh, I'm here on behalf of my uh, Dean, Dr. A. Dari Sami, and uh, Dr. K. Silva Sundaram, Dr. Ma Matthew Armai, Dr. K. Kartikeyan, uh, Dr. Rajesh, Dr. Saravanan. Uh, these are the, my group members. I'm going to uh, consider my takeaways of my group members. Uh, first, uh, the minimalism. Uh, the UHV team members discussed about the needs and wants. We had uh, interesting points over the needs. As you all know, the basic needs of ours is uh, food, cloth, and shelter. Uh, we are all, everyone uh, in the sky is having uh, these kind of uh, uh, needs. But the uh, proper food, proper cloth, proper shelter is important. Uh, the, uh, when we discuss uh, about the self and the minimalism, we used to uh, uh, calculate and we used to count the saris and dresses we, we do have at home. But what are what the uh, basic needs uh, that the proper uh, uh, food, the food permit, are we are taking the proper food permit, the next person is, are we uh, using the proper clothes? We are all wearing the proper clothes uh, outer, but what about the inner clothes? Are they proper? The shelter, we do all have a proper shelter uh, as we see, but the, the poor people, are they having the proper shelter? That, that was the uh, point we got in the minimalism uh, takeaway. On the other hand, harmony in the family. Uh, during the Diwali celebration, uh, we used to, uh, uh, many of the team members used to uh, cooperate or the help the family members at the uh, family level. And also, on the other hand, we had a discussion on the kindness. Uh, kindness in the uh, world is important. Uh, again, during the uh, s some of my faculty members uh, expressed their views on the uh, kindness to towards the nature and the environment, in particular to towards the birds and the animals. During the Diwali celebration, they, did, they didn't use any crackers uh, to show their uh, kindness towards the uh, birds and the animals. Uh, so anger re uh, reduction, uh, pausing uh, five minutes uh, to to reduce our angers. These are all the uh, uh, outcomes from our uh, team members. On the other hand, we would like to thank uh, the team members uh, for the uh, opportunity given to us uh, and uh, the opportunity to express our viewpoints and the takeaways. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Prakasa, for representing SNH group and uh, for the team takeaways. Um, where can I go to the admin team? Yeah, please. please. So, but uh, I, I do want to say that I wish we had a lot of time to listen to everyone. It is so enriching to listen to everyone. You know, I'm sorry that we are going to have to you know, do it in you know, uh, the last part of the session now. So over to Anupama ma'am from uh, representing the admin group. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, so I am uh, representing the admin team, uh, G1, uh, where my team is uh, 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 Ratnam sir, Director Alumini Affairs, uh, Krishna Mohan sir, uh, Associate Director uh, Admissions, Rajendran sir uh, from the library, 
uh, Balaji sir from ITKM and um, uh, Shasti sir from uh, director uh, placements and also I think uh, another admin team also we have uh, taken uh, where sir is going to director IR is going to consolidate so I am uh, uh, representing from our whole team of admins uh, so the first uh, thing about uh, the what what we understood from the UHV MTP, I think uh, because most of them are from the admin group and uh, most of the time they're spending it in the office. So all of them have uh, mentioned that giving a quality time uh, to the family has become a very high priority, which they understand that uh, they have to spend some quality time with the family. So one of the uh, key takeaways, which was common from all the directors and uh, associate directors, that was one with the uh, family. And then uh, the second key, away, uh, key takeaway is what uh, I could see as a consolidated from my team was uh, uh, how uh, the MDP helped them in uh, uh, managing the preconditioning. So uh, how this precondition has uh, made them, uh, you know, have a, uh, uh, you know, uh, to give a better clarity and how to uh, uh, convert this preconditioning into a right understanding. So that is one common thing which I could uh, consolidate from all the uh, uh directors and assistant directors associate directors which we had put up and coming to the incidents um, like i uh, completely um you know agree with uh, hod dsps uh, what she said like uh, we also believe in uh, and even i mentioned this even in our OH, which we uh, when we listen and when we leave the hall we forget so only when we practice it becomes a habit and uh, we start uh, exploring and uh, bringing, uh, bringing it more the first one is how do we um involve it into yourself uh, so I think one of the questions which was uh, mentioned in the uh, UHV also when during our workshop, when our kids ask us a question, uh, we instead of answering them, we always say, you know, neglect and say go. So even during the Diwali time or in the thing, our, our kids were asking us questions, why this is to be done, why we should go to the temple, why this puja should be done, why we should not burst practice. You know, we were trying to answer those questions and when we did not know we did tell them in a very uh, empathetical way that we'll come back and answer your question and uh, we did try to uh, reach out to them so that was one of the uh, you know changes uh, which we try to uh, bring in uh, as a key uh, in, i mean takeaways uh, from the uhv and the second one was uh, with the uh, you know uh, the natural resources uh, sometimes uh, knowingly or unknowingly we exploit the resources so uh, one of the example was uh, using a shower, you know, like uh, uh, I was just reading out this article, like how taking a shower can waste so much of water comparatively to you take it from the bucket of water. So we were trying to implement that at home to avoid shower whenever it is like at least to the maximum level and uh, bring it down to uh, using a bucket of uh, water. And the second one was uh, Diwali, uh, like uh, genetic HOD also mentioned, even at the office as well as at the family level. Uh, usually, when we say, talk about the sharing gifts, it is always uh, we try to give uh, gifts and uh, sweets to our uh, uh, peers who are almost uh, high level peers and uh, try to uh, be, you know, friends and relatives. So this time uh, I changed the complete concept of uh, sharing gifts and sweets uh, with uh, uh, equals and peers. And we brought it down even at the family level and the office level to keep the second tier uh, people and the third tier people uh, where we could see the difference in them and they were very happy taking it so that is uh, one of the very interesting uh, thing which has happened uh, i think all my team members also agree with that so it was very happy to see them happy and our diwali went really happy diwali and uh, so that was from uh, one of our uh, uh, my office also which we followed uh, from the international relations where we tried to uh, implement that in fact even in the family also uh, then uh, i think yeah uh, so at the end, uh, what I try to consolidate from my admin team is um, this is something uh, UHP, MD, whatever we have learned in the UHP. Uh, first thing is to apply it to yourself to a maximum level, then take it up to the uh, next family level and then to the society level to the natural. So it has to happen in a stepwise format. So it is not impossible. So we want to take a small baby steps go ahead and make it as big and try to make it acceptable because we understood that by talking and sharing we all understood that we all have an intention to implement this but somewhere uh, uh, because we are thinking in a bigger level it is not happening so we thought we will do it as a small baby steps put it together and make it big so that is from our admin side thank you thank you so much Anupama ma'am for the nice sharing um, like the oral consultation about the admin's takeaway uh, 
it's playing a major role here. So thank you so much. I think we can listen briefly to Dr. Mohan also. He was so vocal during the workshop. So yeah, yeah he's, 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 going to, he's going to present uh, okay, the, okay, yeah. the overall with admin with his, okay. with his sharing also. Uh, we'd certainly like to hear from everyone. And uh, we will come back to all those who are uh, remaining in this after the main session is over. We will come back to it. So that was very wonderful sharing. All of the sharings are so rich in experience, understanding and experience. So thank you so much for your sharing. The section two of assignment three was to um, make your plan for uh, how you can incorporate uh, human values in SRM, at SRM. So we had a lot of points over here. I won't go into all of them, but uh, make your plans. And a part of that was analyze your plans. How much of the plan is related to uh, developing the right understanding of the students? How much of it is related to relationship and how much of it is related to skills for production of physical facility. Second part is how this education is going to be of help in fulfilling the expectations from education. And these expectations may be articulated by the university. SRM would have articulated these expectations. It's there in your vision statement, for example, your state, the ministry, AICT, UGC, all these bodies are there. Uh, the SDGs are there. So all of them have uh, articulated some expectations from education. So how your plan is going to fulfill the expectations that are articulated in these uh, sort of documents. Then how this education which will help in resolving the problems today, today's problems. And then lastly, how do you see uh, <clears throat> the full possibility? What would be the full possibility if we have this kind of education uh, from school to uh, college and in the society? If this is pervasive, what will the society look like? Uh, Dr. Mohan and I were talking yesterday and it was such a beautiful 45 minutes uh, Dr. Mohan, thank you for uh, that uh, conversation. And we were uh, just uh, uh, thinking that, you know, if this education is there, education on right understanding or developing the right understanding, whether we do it through UHV or any other means, but if we, you know, um, uh, you know, try to awaken to the higher uh, uh, possibility of the human uh, consciousness, uh, what would the society look like? And Dr. Mohan was saying, what, 50 years? <laughs> Your mic is muted, Dr. Mohan. Yeah, so uh, we'd like to now hear from uh, the different departments. And uh, 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 first, we'll go to uh, medical. I'm, I'm uh, requesting medical to share first because uh, this would be the first university uh, who are, who, which is taking up uh, this education in medical so seriously. So that's why we are, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. please go can ahead. I share the screen? Yeah, yeah please. Uh, yes, we'll... sir, please, please. You can proceed with sharing your screen. Yeah, one second. I'll stop sharing from here and you can yeah. share. Yes. Uh, we'll have 10 minutes each. If you can do it in 10 minutes each, that would be nice. Yeah, yes. Yeah, thank you. So, the respected dignitaries and my co explorers, namaste to everyone. And uh, Lao would say a Chinese mystic has told this. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. 
If the single step is in the right direction, you will reach the right destination. If it is not in the right direction, you will be wandering throughout the earth. So I'm going to highlight upon this first step that is uh, in the right direction, that is universal human values. I am Dr. Satyanarayanan, Professor of Pharmacology as well as Associate Dean, Student Affairs, and Chairperson of UHA Committee, Sarum Medical College. So first of all, I'd like to thank all my members of the team who have contributed to this uh, presentation. And uh, I think um, Dr. Ashma has highlighted, I mean, they have mentioned all their names. Let me move on to the second group, uh, Dr. T.S. Vera Gaudaman, Professor, uh, Dean in Charge of Physiotherapy, Dr. Chitra, Dean Pharmacy, Dr. N. Nalini Jayanti, ma'am, uh, Professor of HOD of Respiratory Medicine, and um, Dr. Gamodharan, Vice Principal, the Sun College of Pharmacy, Dr. Swanalaka, Professor, OBG Department, and Dr. Suman Kanagia, Associate Professor, School of Public Health. So let us see, first of all, what is the need for value education? Why it is required? If you look at our current education system, it is skill bias. That means we teach the students the skills, how to do things more efficiently, rather than what to do and why to do. It's like shooting arrows in the empty air without any aim or target. Arrows moves towards every, everywhere except the target. The target is, has to be, aim has to be given by us, that is value education, which plays a crucial role in equipping individuals to fulfill their life purpose. Not only that, it helps the students to explore their capacity to live and reach their full potential. It helps them to align with the requirements of society and the environment, leading to uh, live with happiness in a diverse society where it's interconnected globally. And a few months back, we take a survey among students about uh, their stress levels, you know, that is medical using medical students' stress questionnaire, which is a well-dated structured questionnaire. You can see the stress levels are indicated between two to three. Two to three indicates the more values fall under that, two to three. It indicates high levels of stress. So why that stress is seen among medical students or any students? Because they have a crisis moment. That is, you know, current situation of crisis in their minds. The reason is being we uh, miss the miss to teach human holistic value based education is the essential missing link. So uh, if you uh, include this in our curriculum, it will guide everyone towards their self transform self transformation, leading to societal transformation. Uh, where it it cannot happen in the other ways, the reverse direction. Uh, so, uh, coming to our institution, it is uh, basically medical and health sciences, where learning human values and ethics are of fundamental importance, which will help to treat the patients holistically in a compassionate way. So, one more reason is being, uh, there is a research uh, study shows 80% of the dissatisfaction in medical practice is due to uh, behavior of healthcare professionals. If you teach values, these issues will be resolved leading to greater patient satisfaction and reduce stress among in healthcare professionals. So it's a win-win situation if we take this to uh, medical students. So let us uh, move on to the vision for holistic value-based education. And um, if you uh, include vision, I mean, include holistic value-based education, it will help the students to explore about their basic aspiration and discover for themselves that is being happy and prosperous, which is universal common to every individual. So it will lead to uh, learning further, explore further the relationships with right understanding, leading to uh, right feelings and trust, which will make the society fearless, as well as, you know, move, there, will be, there will be happening of mutual happiness and mutual prosperity with harmony at all levels, individual level, family level, and society level. And it allows them to discover the sense of responsibility also towards larger orders, towards family, society, nature, and existence. And coming to our institution, uh, the vision of our, our institution is very clear. That is, learn, live, and leave. So this is a logo of our uh, institution, SRM University. So learning human holistic value-based education might lead everyone in the direction of humane society, which is just and equitable. which is a giant leap in the direction of self-transformation as well as societal transformation. Then we can our institution can be a model institution, which can lead all other institutions also, initiating the change jump towards that change and guiding towards this change. So that is our vision of our institution. So in short, it can be a great game changer, that is holistic value-based education, which can transform our entire society by igniting young minds, the learners, the students, community, with a clear vision of seeing life with an entirely different perspective, uh, that is holistic value-based education. So let us further move on to implementation plan for holistic value-based education. After uh, observing the importance of uh, this uh, uh, 
holistic value-based education by universal human values. We started implementing already in our medical college and we have formed a UHC committee We conducted sensitization programs for uh, faculties in small groups. Then we added a UHC course also in first semester curriculum as a validated course. We conduct the UHC course with uh, excellent feedback from the students. And we also started UHC Buddy Club for those very much interested students. Currently, we've got 550 students. So I'm uh, sharing some of the uh, voices from, from the student community, first year MBBA students. They give an excellent feedback, but I, I don't have much time to uh, go into each one. But just highlighting about important things. That is, one student has highlighted, I have practically transformed a complete new person, more streamlined and more happier now. And another feedback says, I have decided to bring happiness from within. Another feedback says, being more mindful about my thoughts. So all these things are written by the, I mean, given by the uh, uh, students by their own words. UHV has prompted me to be mindful of people and their feelings. It has motivated me to find my true purpose in life and not just run the rat race like everyone else. It was helpful for exploring myself and to understand many things which have been understood in a wrong manner by me. So all these are genuine explorations by the students within four days. In four days, we can reach to such, such a level. Uh, just imagine, you know, if we spend more time on this, we'll be seeing many, many uh, good uh, endings. So uh, plan further implementation. Uh, we like to introduce which SIP for all first year students, MBBA students as part of their foundation course. Also, we like to include them to dental, pharmacy, and AHS students. And we like to start courses, well-added courses like holistic health, UHA2, and also buddy club activities. Then we can uh, prepare faculty mentors who will guide small number of mentees. And we would like to introduce tag along system where senior students who are trained in this will mentor the junior students. Then sensitization programs for non-teaching staff, planning outreach activities, environmental protection activities, and new value-added courses. So coming to new value-added courses, SAP with um, IKS, Indian Knowledge System, UHC2, Holistic Health, Foundation Course in Indian Constitutional Values, Human Psychology. So year by year, we'll be increasing one course per year so that at the end of the course, they'll come as a complete uh, individual. So then uh, who are going to develop this or teach this? They developed by members of UHC committee, which is already, uh, we are doing it, uh, the team of UHC cell with the national ACT UHC team members. And we're currently, we've got uh, 27 faculties completed the introductory course, nine faculties UHC2 completed, 13 faculties completed UHC MDP. So how to equip materials, manpower, infrastructure, materials already there, teaching resources are there. Manpower, we like to encourage more number of faculties to participate in this. Then all the other uh, infrastructure and other logistics provided by this view. And uh, non-curricular actions in campus, we can increase interactions with the mentors and uh, buddy club activities, the interactions between other disciplinary students in the campus for partnerships, the local meetings consist of sharing sessions, and campus-wide cleanup programs, like initiation of such programs, and online meetings with the national issue team, encouraging the students for this. So all these are the uh, non-curricular actions. Off campus, we can plan field trips, local outreach activities, partnerships and collaborations with organizations, community gardens, environmentally responsible events, as well as social media, traditional news outlets, and uh, PSAs, that is public service announcements. So you can run campaigns to educate the public through these media. And uh, sustainability measures can be followed. I think, uh, I don't have much time, I think, so I just quickly go through this. Uh, we like to introduce lesson waste and the recycling wastes, track of carbon footprint, lessen uh, the energy used, appropriate water usage. So all these measures can be planned further. So assessment of outcome, a sense outcome can be assessed by activity parameters, desirable outcome parameters as well as undesirable outcome parameters. So institutional uh, as a whole, uh, we can assess it by um, graduation, graduate attributes, and uh, is institution is living a model of an equitable and just society, or uh, tangible progress towards being one, like in changes, meaningfully contribute to the changes, holistic development in the village, block, district, city, like that. So we can assess both students as an institution as a whole. Then we can create monitoring systems to track the impact of value-driven education on student behavior, campus sustainability, as well as community engagement. So uh, this is the assessment process. Let's shortly coming to specific commitments and implementation uh, in the implementation of this plan. So at the administrative level, focus on the implementation plan in the above set proposed plan step-by-step. -step. 
and outcome assessment by appropriate measures in the timeline. Individual level committed to self development by self exploration, development of colleagues and students, development of family members, development of societal members, nation, and the world. So, at all levels, we can contribute. So, I like to summarize my presentation by, by telling viewers about bridging of value education with the skill education. So, first bridge is the students come from schooling to first MBBS. We will start with student induction program with UHE 1 and Indian Knowledge System 1. Second bridge is uh, UHE 2 in the second year. Third bridge is holistic human health, its philosophy and practice in the third year. And fourth year, foundation course in Indian constitutional values. So, when they go to CRRI, we go for holistic psychology. Method. So, this is along with outreach activities and community health activities. So thereby, a school student coming inside the college will turn into a responsible citizen of the world. So uh, this is, of course, uh, education has much potential. It purposes to transform the individual and the society. That can be only done by uh, transformation of the consciousness from the animal level to human consciousness. They will have right understanding, right relationship with the physical facility, which will produce mutual happiness and mutual prosperity. So I like to summarize. I mean, I like to conclude my presentation uh, with a few with few words about uh, this. That is, you know, we have a chance to make the change, change the destiny of the world because we have the most powerful weapon in our hands. That is education. And um, previously, the transformation process was a dream among many people, many mystics, many uh, philosophers all over the world. But uh, now it's a systematic plan. So don't call it a dream. Call it a plan. We can do it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Namaste. It was really a wonderful presentation and uh, uh, every aspect, right from the beginning and implementation plan, everything you have uh, uh, made it really great. And uh, as I always say, this medical unit, once you have joined with uh, this UHP team, you people have started doing a great initiative and uh, you are always being the backbone for the entire team. Uh, thank you so much for the all the plans and uh, needs. Everything you have expressed it very genuinely and uh, uh, the way uh, this the plans, everything. So thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. Your guidance and will help timely help for everything. You know, whenever we approach, we'll be you know giving us many many suggestions, all the things. Yes, thank you very much, sir, brother. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so so nice to hear your full plan. Uh, I mean, I don't have any words to, uh, you know, add to that. What has been said, very nice. Uh, is uh, Nitin ji here, Nitin Nagarkarji? Uh, sir is of course in. Uh, will be uh, joining us at twelve fifteen, sir. Is in a meeting. All right. Okay. okay. Uh, he had come for the conference uh, in Bhutan, yes. and uh, we had a very large gathering. Uh, so when he comes, we will hear from him. Uh, next, we'd like to invite Dr. Uh, Arumai, uh, head in charge social work. So, uh, uh, Professor Arumai, please, uh, you're sharing. So, Matip, sir, uh, you'd like to share it from your end or? Matip, sir. Matthew, sir, you need to unmute yourself. Hello. Yes, Hello. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I would like to share on a slide. Sir, your voice is very feeble. Like it is not audible. No. Probably, if you if you could remove your headset. It could be better, I guess. Is it okay, madam? Yes, yes. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning to one and all. Sir, you would like to share the screen from your end or should I share it for you? No, no, no. Let me share it from my end, madam. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank our management and our dean, sir, Dr. A. Durai Swami, for giving me this opportunity to uh, sir, sorry to interrupt. Can you please put it in a full screen mode? It will be useful for everyone to see. It. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, madam. 
uh, for giving me, giving me this opportunity to you know, make a presentation on the UHC about the second part. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Philo uh, Sundaram, Kathigayan sir, Rajesh sir, uh, Prakash sir, Tarunan sir, Sir Shankaran sir, Mageshiri madam, Shankari madam, Jai Ganesh sir, Lalita madam, Mariolagan sir, and Surinder sir. And whose uh, work actually I have consolidated in the second part and uh, I'm making presentation now. Uh, before you know, moving on to the uh, second part presentation, uh, let me share my uh, takeaway first. Actually, uh, after attending uh, attending this you know workshop, it actually facilitated me to analyze. Sir, again, the... uh, sorry to interrupt. Your slides are not moving, and you are not in a full screen mode. Sorry to interrupt, sir. You can put yourself in a full screen mode, and your slides is also not moving. Is it okay, madam, now? Yes, now it's okay, sir. Uh, slides can be changed. Thank you. Yes, madam. Actually, uh, five important things actually I learned from this uh, workshop. It actually facilitated me to analyze myself and uh, guided me to aware, the aware of what is happening you know, around me and also uh, helped me to make you know, harmony in myself as well as in my family and society and uh, helping others to realize about themselves. Because uh, when I talk about you know, analyzing myself, actually uh, it helped me to analyze about my strength as well as the weaknesses. See, uh, now after attending this you know, workshop, see I'm able to analyze my, you know, identify my st uh, strength as well as the weakness. And accordingly now I actually I'm planning to improve myself about my uh, strength. For example, convincing others is my uh, strength. Now, I actually, I decided to you know improve further on that. The second thing is uh, self-awareness. See, when I talk about the self-awareness, see, after finishing my work, I used to go home and you know settle down. I usually don't go out and you know mingle with others. My socialization is very poor in my area where I live. But after this, you know, workshop. No, after reaching my home, I used to go out, you know, mingling and uh, sharing with others and uh, learning what is, you know, actually around, uh, happening in my areas. And the third thing is about the, you know, uh, bringing harmony in the family. Um, normally, I won't, you know, spend a lot of time with the family members. And because of uh, that reason, there is a gap between my daughter and me and wife and me. Now, I'm able to spend more, you know, time with them and listening to their, you know, uh, activities they carried out all through the days. And that actually uh, bring me to go closer to them and bring some harmony uh, within the uh, family. And uh, the fourth one is about the realizations, the helping, you know, when the other, you know, uh, seeking help from me instead of helping them, See, now uh, we realized and we uh, analyzed uh, to help the people to help themselves. Instead of all the time, you know, the people relying on ourselves, when they, you know, seeking any help from my side, I normally help the people to help for themselves. This is, these are the three, the uh, five, you know, uh, takeaways. Apart from that, uh, the influence of preconditions. Uh, coming to the you know, influence of uh, preconditions, normally I take decisions uh, based on the previous exposure and the experience I gained and the socialization uh, process I gained through my family and the education institution or the uh, society where in I live. Now, after this workshop, see, instead of, you know, uh, uh, when others, you know, coming and you know, uh, sharing something about their problem, about their views, about their perspective, I should, you know, uh, listen to them with a open mind. This is what actually I learned from uh, this workshop, and I should not take any decision based on my uh, influence, the you know, experiences or the influence or the experiences that I gained from the past. The third one is how to create a trust in family and the workplaces. So, see, uh, when talk about the trust, see, um, 
I seldom visited my daughter's schools for attending any parents' meeting or any other programs conducted uh, by them. So I usually, when she uh, called for it, I promise her, but I usually I don't go and attend it. But you know, last month I happened to be there, and uh, you know, on seeing me, she was very surprised, and uh, she came and hugged me, and uh, she, you know, very happy with me, and uh, that in the incidents, okay, uh, changed me to develop a trust in my daughter towards me, created. The third thing is. Uh, making me happy and happy about. See, normally uh, I'm worrying about my future and spend most of the time on that. Instead, enjoying the present moment, uh, enjoying the present moment. But after this, you know, workshop, I just, you know, realized I have to spend and uh, engage myself in the present moment and uh, bring uh, not only the enjoyment to me, and to others as well in my family and society. The third thing is uh, how to develop a develop and practice the rational thoughts through erasing the irrational thoughts. See, sometimes in our day-to-day -day activities, uh, when I carrying out you know many activities, if I you know encounter any uh, setbacks or failure, sometimes you know I you know, feel like I'm not worth it. So the, these are, you know, irrational thoughts comes and, you know, uh, hinders my progress. Now I realize that after analyzing these, you know, thoughts, even uh, in the negative situation, I should think in a positive way for my progress. So these are the different things actually I learned from this uh, workshop. Uh, coming to the, you know, uh, interesting in the incident uh, that took place during the UHC workshop, the interactive sessions was very nice, especially the resource person. Though we had a difference of opinion in many areas, he was actually patiently uh, listening to us and clarified all our doubts through the interactions. It was very nice. Uh, thanks to Kumar sir, and we also, you know, because of this, in you know, our workshop, we had a conversation with my family that actually facilitated them to be happy and sharing their views, okay, uh, etc. Coming to the second part of, uh, okay, uh, presentation, uh, I would like to, you know, uh, first, the need for the, share the need for the HPV in our SRMist. Uh, a person without values is like a body without heart. Therefore, acquiring a true values has become the need of today's well, the cultural shifts, pressures within the education system, the influence of media, economic pressures, technological advancement and uh, distractions, parental influences and uh, social changes are key factors contributing to the erosion of values among the students and youth in the contemporary world. In addition to that, the family history, peer pressures and the transition from the school to college life and the progress in the course are important factors associated with the students engaging in substance abuse, which gradually decrease their moral uh, moral and ethical uh, values. Against this you know, backdrop, our H H F S a Faculty of Science and Humanity has actually proposed to take initiative to introduce an advanced level of HBB in our course. This actually HBB would undoubtedly support our students in making the right uh, the right decisions and uh, experiencing truth and working in the right direction to attain harmony and uh, oneself and family and society. Coming to the vision, our institution has a vision you know, to emerge as a world-class uh, university in creating and disseminating knowledge and providing students a unique uh, learning experience in science and technology, medicine, management and the other areas of scholarship that will best serve the world and betterment of the mankind. If in future we introduce or incorporate HBV into our field of arts, science, technology, management and other areas of education, we we'll definitely empower our students with a deep 
understanding of universal values, equipping them to navigate in life complexity with the wisdoms and resilience and a commitment to ethical excellence, thereby shaping a future where ethical consideration are intrinsic to every decision and interaction. Coming to the mission uh, for HBB, we have actually framed five missions, uh, ensuring students all grown development through human value-based education. The second one is empowering the students to make the right choices and take moral and ethical decision in challenging the situation in their lives. The third, the fostering a sense of patriotism and solidarity among the students' community. The fourth one is fostering a culture of acceptance, adaptability, accountability, and tolerance within a society characterized by cultural diversity and varied value system. The last one is nurturing the democratic outlook in the way of life. Then, coming to the, the curricular activity, activities that we have actually planned to implement in future uh, for our faculty of science and humanities. The first thing is updating the existing. See, now uh, in the first semester, we actually been implementing the uh, UHV to our first year UG students. And in future, we would like to also updating the existing curriculum in the UG level. The second thing is making all the subject value-based. We are dealing with you know different subjects for our students. So whichever subjects we teach, irrespective of all that, we should you know, incorporate some value-based information in that. The third thing is students, you know, induction program on HVB to the okay. When the students joining to our institutions, okay, maybe at the first week, actually we normally conduct a induction program to all the students in our you know college similarly we can also allocate a separate half a day for the students to undergo this training the third thing is represent course for the senior students normally we teach our students at the first year the first year about the hbv maybe in the second and third years we can also allocate some times and uh, we can also encourage the share uh, we can encourage the students to share their, you know, ideas and views and uh, what they have learned from the first year. And we can also incorporate any other new things which is very important for their progress in the value education. The third thing is uh, advanced value added courses on HBV for both UG and PG students. This is in addition to the, you know, subject we teach in the first year. We can also include you know, value added courses uh, separately. The inter interested students can join and you know get to know about the value education and incorporate and practice in their lives. Then the sixth one is implementation of uh, formation of institutional ethical committee for FHS. That is in a very important aspect. And in the medical field, they have an institutional ethical committee. Similarly, uh, for FHS, we can uh, we should also implement an uh, institutional ethical committee that will help us to carry out a lot of other activities for the uh, progress of the students as well as for the institution. The last one is inclusion of students level mentor mentee programs. Here we should train the senior students so that they can also go and you know uh, counsel or guide the students who are at the junior level. See, these are the different uh, uh, curricular activities. Coming to the non-curricular activities, we can also conduct a faculty development program uh, as we conduct a you know, program in our uh, respective uh, disciplines. Apart from that, we can also conduct workshops on UHV for both faculty members and uh, students in the college itself. And uh, organizing the national and the regional level workshop on HBV we can also inviting you know other resource persons, maybe the participants from other colleges. Uh, they will come and participate in the program that we conduct in our colleges. 
organizing a national and international level uh, conferences on HVBV, organizing the seminar, regular seminars and uh, guest lecture regularly at our uh, college and uh, department level, uh, creation of think and tank among the students to promote HBV. So we can you know, create a lot of other uh, uh, clubs through which we can also promote HBV activities, not only for the students, once it is you know, created, they can also go outside of the college and you know, interact with the community and bring a lot of you know, developmental activities and uh, that will you know, bring harmony in the society as well. Then lastly, inter-colleges or inter-universities faculty and student exchange program also we can conduct because, see, whenever you conduct any program here, and we can also impart and inculcate to the students or faculty members in the other colleges as well. At the same time, we can also invite the you know, faculty members other, uh, from other colleges and the students from other colleges. They can come and share uh, about their learnings about you know HBV with our students in our college that will you know help us to uh, you know uh, live in harmony. Then outreach programs. Uh, coming to the outreach uh, programs, we can also carry out a lot of community services like volunteering, uh, environment cleaning, social service uh, distribution of notebooks, tree plantations. We can also collaborate with the different stakeholders in the community like uh, you know, elected, non-elected leader, and civil society organizations, uh, faith-based organizations, community-based organization, NGOs. We can have a tie-up with them, and we can also go and carry it with a lot of developmental activities. We can also help the students to you know, work for that, uh, uh, with that organization for the noble cause of the society. And uh, apart from that, we can also uh, make, you know, uh, regular awareness program on health and development issues. For example, uh, nowadays, you know, uh, drug abuse became a, a huge problem among the college students as well as the city side. As a, you know, a member of our college and the university, we can also regularly visit and identify the needs of the community. Accordingly, we can also create a lot of uh, health and development uh, awareness program to them and in, uh, initiation of student mentorship at the community level. See, once we train UHV uh, to our, uh, uh, once we trained our students on UHV, they can regularly visit the, you know, uh, communities which we have already adapted, some villages, you know, we have adapted, our university adapted, wherein they can go and organize some mentorship uh, programs with the students at the community level this will you know ensure the progress the all run uh, progress then apart from that we can also conduct a lot of uh, arts and culture programs like dance programs like uh, singing competitions uh, within the department and inter department inter college program we can also organize and meditation yoga programs also we can all uh, organize then leadership and personality development workshop field trips we can also uh, take the student to the field where we can uh, facilitate them to interact with the nature and we can also you know guide them to interact with the community people identify their needs and help them to you know chart out uh, them with their full cooperations this will normally you know happen through the field trips apart from that in the college level within our college within our department we can also organize a lot of uh, debates and the panel uh, discussion on the uhv then we can also conduct a lot of you know seminars training programs at the community level involving the different stakeholders in the community so that we can also identify the needs of community about their perspectives about the universal that will help us to learn more about that and bring harmony in the society and we can also conduct a sports competition for the for our students as well as the students from outside. That is already our call, our university has been uh, doing, and we can also you know do many other programs through outreach programs. Coming to the monitoring and evaluation, conducting uh, periodical meetings at students, faculty, administrative level, and updating of knowledge one. Second course assessment, normally we do it for our usual students. See, whenever we pro conduct any program, we can also assess their knowledge. Eh? 
Uh, apart from that, we can also get feedback from the stakeholders like uh, students, faculty members, participants of various programs or community programs. If we conduct any program, we can also uh, get a feedback about our programs and accordingly develop it further for the uh, community harmony, for the students' harmony. Then pre and post program assessment. Suppose we conduct any you know, workshop or any uh, seminar, we can also uh, conduct you know, pre and post assessment and impact assessment at the individual and the community level. This is very important because when talking about the impact assessment, if you carry out something for the progress of the community, for the uh, progress of the students, maybe after one or two years, we should you know, go and assess what sort of impact our education created in their personal and professional life. That would you know, uh, help us to bring a lot of changes for the students as well as for the uh, societal uh, costs. They're coming to the specific commitment. Uh, sir, sorry to interrupt. Can you quickly intervene because uh, next to the... Yes, yes, Mana, sorry. Uh, okay. Coming to the specific commitment, uh, students' dedications to going beyond the theoretical knowledge and uh, apply ethical principles in the real world scenario one. Second, devotion of faculty members in designing a curriculum which seamlessly incorporate value-based teaching into the various disciplines the third, the provision of infrastructure by administrator to implement the programs. The fourth one is creating a campus uh, culture that promote dialogues on moral, ethical dilemmas and encouraging critical thinking and uh, reflection. With which, let me uh, conclude my presentation. Again, uh, I would like to thank our management, our dean, sir, and various uh, uh, department heads for giving me this opportunity to present and uh, thank you once, uh, once again. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Uh, my <clears throat> very detailed plan that you have made, I think it deserves, you know, good uh, applause and I hope that thank you, sir. you'll be able to take it uh, at the pace that you are expecting, you know, that is very nice. <laughs> All right. So, uh, next we will invite uh, Professor T.V. Gopal. Uh, Professor Gopal has been a uh, guiding light for this UHV cell at SRM. So, uh, let's welcome uh, Professor T.V. Gopal. Thank you, uh, sir, and uh, very good afternoon to one and all. Um, of course, uh, before proceeding to my presentation, uh, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, mention that all the seven group uh, in the engineering and technology, um, headed by Dr. Uh, Lakshmi, Dr. Prasanna Devi, Dr. Ramya, Dr. Varshini Kartik, Dr. Linus Martin, Dr. Sridhar, and Dr. Pushpalata. Uh, first of all, I must um, thank them for their uh, uh, input that they have given uh, based on their interaction within their uh, group members. Uh, with that, I'll just start my presentation and uh, I will not take much of a time, uh, though I, I, I will have a lot of things to share, but uh, I'm just limiting all the uh, things because of want of time. Uh, key takeaways. Uh, first thing is uh, understood how accumulation of physical facilities impact society and nature. Of course, uh, personally, I am not a person who accumulates physical facilities, uh, but uh, for the sake of family or for the sake of my uh, family members, I would say, uh, I did uh, accumulate a few physical facilities. Uh, for, for example, if I would like to quote uh, groceries, when I go to a grocery shop I, or a vegetable shop, I normally purchase more than what is required. Uh, if I require uh, for a week's uh, or a month's, I mean, in the case of grocery, if it is for, uh, say, 5 kg, if I would like to purchase something, uh, but generally I go for 10 kg or a bag full of thing, where there are two uh, objectives for this. Uh, when I go for a bulk purchase, I have some savings in that, uh, but and also 
uh, a selfish motive where I don't need to go quite often to the grocery shop because I am the only person who go to the grocery shop or any other uh, shop for purchases. So to keep myself away from that household uh, work, I do that. Uh, the second thing is, uh, of course, uh, to my granddaughter, I out of my uh, love and affection, if she asks for one toy, I give two toys. If she asks for one uh, lollipop, I give two lollipops, something like this. Very petty, petty things, but still. Uh, and similarly, the electricity. Uh, there, there will be a lot of lights and fans in my house, and I feel that all my rooms should be lighted. I don't want any room to be in the dark, uh, including the kitchen. So this, I thought uh, it will end live in my uh, life or my family. But uh, after UHV, I came to know that though I am a technical person, I know the impact, uh, how this electricity is generated, the, the coal, where it where is it got from and all those things. But still, I was not too conscious in my personal life. Though I am a technical person, I know the impact. But after the UHV, I have started restricting all these things. And these are some of the a few uh, points I would like to touch upon, but I can elaborate much more on this. And uh, the next key takeaway is complementing is better than competing, uh, which is a very, very critical uh, point which needs to be understood by each and every student, I would say, and also the faculty members. Unless the faculty members understand, they cannot uh, inculcate this uh, attribute or character to the students. Uh, a few examples, if I would like to say, uh, with due regards to all my faculty members, uh, they get project funding. Once they get the project funding, uh, it is for the university, I do agree, but uh, they set up a lab, they ask for a lot of uh, space, more than what is required. If they want uh, 10 square feet of uh, room, they ask for 100 square feet of room. And uh, once they establish the lab, uh, again, with due regards to all the researchers and faculty members, they don't allow other faculty members or students to work on it. They do allow only their own research scholars to work on it. It becomes like, I mean, I will not criticize them. They feel that it is their property. I mean, they have built it. Their vision is coming to uh, fruition. So they want their research scholars or their uh, research to be done first, given priority, and then maybe after four years or so, they can accommodate, something like this. Similarly, the research findings, they don't share it with others. Again, the patenting issue and all those things have come. Have come. So there, uh, I would like to have some research colloquiums and uh, sensitize the faculty members. Uh, instead of uh, competing with each other, let us complement each other, uh, their work, their intellectual knowledge or their physical facilities. So sharing of resources, for example, if they have uh, if they have a laptop, they still ask for a desktop. Okay, uh, so this can be shared actually, or they, this can be avoided. So I have a big list, so I don't want to go in depth in this uh, because of time paucity. And working on minimizing the preconditioned mindset to resolve issues, yeah. Uh, I myself have this preconditioned mind. Uh, I don't know, after UHV, I, I am trying to change, but whether I have 100% change, I don't know. For example, if a student comes, very recent happenings I am just quoting, now is the time where the students start paying their fee dues. Because if they don't pay the fee dues, uh, there will be uh, uh, complications in... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, appearing for the exam or downloading the hall ticket or something like that. Now they come up with health issues. They give medical certificates and all those things. Quite often, uh, I have a pre -mind, uh, preconditioned mindset that all these, uh, what you call medical certificates or reasons that they attribute are all fake just to avoid the ex uh, fee dues and uh, start appearing for the exam. And once they appear for the exam, they will... Uh, again, uh, dodge till the next semester. But uh, there are a lot of students who are really financially uh, into trouble and they have taken loans and they are unable to pay the fees till the last moment. And uh, distinction between this uh, real issue uh, and uh, the students who are really faking, it's really getting uh, difficult. 
and i have a pre conditioned mindset that every student comes with a fake certificate or comes with a fake reason uh, genuine reasons are uh, very hard to assess so this i need to change similarly with the faculty members also if some requests come uh, there are some pre conditioned mindsets that these people will do wrong always or these people will always be right but quite often it is opposite the people whom i think they are always right or they will not do such things they are the people who uh, come out with some uh, excuse a uh, lame excuses uh, but uh, people whom i think that they are uh, uh, always faking or uh, coming out with some uh, lame excuses they are they really have some genuine uh, reasons for uh, not doing their work or and not coming out with the sticking on to the timelines or something like that then the last one is the right understanding of relationships is fundamental to harmony and happiness yeah uh, this i stated that on the last day of the uhv uh, M mdp also uh, generally i am a person who sticks to systems and processes and uh, when deviations from that or request for deviations uh, come Uh, or exemptions request for exemptions come i lose my temper and uh, shout at them when i say shout at them i i am harsh to them uh, i i will say that no this is the rule i uh, i can't budge on this so uh, this uh, i am trying to uh, i mean change to an extent that uh, uh, balancing between implementing the systems processes rules and regulations and also uh, be empathetic to the faculty members and the students uh, one uh, glaring example uh, i would say is uh, very recently there was one faculty member uh, who had some issues in the research lab in their lab with their department with all the depart uh, department faculty members i would say and also with the uh, uh, research scholars around uh, him and uh, he started losing his uh, regular character and started uh, uh, abusing people and started uh, uh, what do you call uh, misbehaving in the lab which is uh, against the ethics actually and uh, there were lot of concerns expressed that uh, life is uh, uh, is being threatened by this particular person and he needs to be dismissed and all those thing but uh, i after the uhv i understood that it's not only the uh the inner feelings of him there are some other issues root causes are there and uh, i suggested that let him take a leave talk to his wife also and then uh, asked him to take a leave for uh, two to three months and try to uh, go for counseling or something and again rejoin by january so uh, this is also one uh, empathetic uh, thing so uh, i understood the uh, right understanding i would say of the relationship Uh, which i think it would create harmony and happiness uh, to the faculty member and to the department also yeah with this i'll move on to the next one. need for values in education uh, yeah these are all uh, very uh, obvious thing uh, holistic development of individuals uh, which will actually uh, nurture their character and coming out with this empathetic uh, uh, character or traits and ethical values following all the ethical values so this should be uh, the core essence in all the curriculum design so definitely these values must be or will be included in uh, many of the courses as and when uh, required and preparing for future challenges uh, so values such as resilience adaptability and ethical decision making are vital uh, so definitely because of this uh, we need to have values in education and conducive environment and clarity on basic aspirations and uh, uhv uh, we are sure that will bring clarity by strengthening uh, self exploration and uh, creating a, a committed environment or a, a, a what do you call conducive environment and i have touched upon the last one uh, second i mean uh, penultimate one complementary rather than competitive approach so students have to uh, be sensitized on this competition should be there uh, i don't say uh, aspirations and competition should not be there but um, it has to be as a teamwork team effort it should complement uh, one with the other and to instill social responsibility and ethics this is really lacking 
among the students of uh, present generation. Social responsibility is not at all there and ethics is not at all there. So definitely this value education will uh, bring in uh, these kinds of uh, uh, characters or values within the students. Yeah, next. Vision, of course, uh, to create an environment where students are not only academically proficient, but also possess a strong foundation in moral and ethical values. So this being a technical uh, institute, uh, students quite often uh, focus, and even the faculty members, we always rely on the technical knowledge uh, and the soft skills, of course, rather than uh, uh, moral and ethical values. Somehow, uh, they achieve what they want. That's what. Uh, so this must uh, be changed. The proper environment should be created. And to produce graduates, uh, they are not only as no noble professionals, but also compassionate individuals, uh, which will have an impact on the society, positive impact, of course. And uh, to foster values and abilities in the students, to aim to create a fair and inclusive society, emphasizing on individual growth and shared achievement. Yeah. Yeah, curriculum design, uh, we already have this UHV 1 and UHV 2 and few minor programs. So we'll be moving on with that. And uh, from this value, human value courses to value-based education. So in all the courses, this human values will be incorporated uh, either uh, directly or in an indirect way. And uh, dedicated courses on ethics, social responsibility, moral reasoning, etc., will be uh, introduced either as an elective or as a, a minor degree or something like, like that. And of course, uh, internships are there already, uh, but the only thing uh, they go for only industries. They work only with men and mission, uh, but uh, not with uh, organizations promoting uh, value-based uh, uh, initiatives. So this we would be focusing on that. And a capstone project or community project, all the projects we can have some sort of a community connect there, where it is relevant to the society, where there will be an impact on the society. And cross-cultural values and diversity, our campus is a multicultural, multinational uh, uh, campus. So cross-cultural values and diversity should be built in, sensitizing the students and the faculty members. For example, a person who is a non-Tamil speaking person, you should not speak uh, in Tamil in front of those people. Uh, I mean, this is a very basic thing, but uh, it adds value to the uh, character to the of the person. Environmental ethics and sustainability, of course, uh, how we are going to implement this is going to be a challenge. And global citizenship and social justice. Yeah, uh, how we are going to implement, uh, as I said, uh, we have been uh, doing UHV1 and UHV2 as part of that, but we will be continuing with the same. Uh, minor degrees are there in UHV as per the ACT, but uh, probably we will have some minor degree uh, which uh, uh, covers these values, ethical uh, issues and morality and all those things. Then, uh, of course, uh, to cater to the nature, uh, we will be reducing the automobiles inside the campus, uh, introducing electric vehicle and uh, food waste. We have a uh, food waste uh, policy actually but uh, still a uh, lot of food are being wasted. So we will try to sensitize the students and the faculty members uh, and the mess persons also on this. And ramps for the physically challenged, toilet for the physically challenged. Uh, this is a human, human and human nature, uh, in which impacts the human, human and human uh, nature. Uh, hackathon programs may be floated among the students to solve problems. So students are the best brains, actually. Their brains, their... Uh, team effort will be good. And if they become part of the initiatives, they have a sense of belongingness. So automatically they will fall in line instead of having rules and regulations uh, put in place. So alternate materials for plastics and not to waste food and other things. So these programs can be hackathons can be conducted. And health and hygiene programs, uh, workshops, seminars or whatever uh, events we would like to have uh, so that uh, uh, how to use a toilet uh, and how to throw the waste in, only in the dustbin and segregation of waste and so many other things are there. And uh, there are uh, so many, uh, um, what do you call it? distractions uh, like junk foods. There are no organic foods. So health and hygiene programs can be connected. 
of course e waste waste management avoid plastic so all these awareness can be created through posters and other uh, campaigns outreach activities that impart knowledge about uhv outside of srm so within srm we can do all these things but the same student when he goes out he should still follow the same values and morality so outreach activities have to be imparted from among the society and also the students here yeah. uh, senior uh, students who have gone uhv classes they can also take for juniors uh, because peer learning helps always and workshop for parents yeah parents have to be educated in fact so we may plan for uh, workshops and other things on uhv for the parents uh, on how to uh, bring in values for the students i mean for their wards then community outreach programs we already have a lot of uh, community outreach programs through unnat bharat and uh, other uh, initiatives nss and other thing so uh, we can adopt some uh, villages and others uh, communities so that we can inculcate or promote human values and uh, courses like holistic human health iks vision for human society etc can will be introduced uh, and incorporate sustainable development goals in curriculum yeah next yeah how to assess uh, the uh, i mean what are the measures we can uh, used for uh, gauging this process so because these are all very generic uh, but i would just go with uh, appointment of values coordinator and partnering with ngos and experts and networking with other institutions uh, so that the best practices and other things can be included so this is our action plan thank you so much wonderful uh, plan professor uh, tv gopal many congratulations for taking so many uh, points and taking them putting them all together and you are going to lead the way for uh, the engineering uh, wing and other colleges will certainly benefit from you know the technologies and the courses all of that it will become a model for engineering it can become a model for engineering so thank you many, many thanks for your presentation and now uh, we'll invite uh, dr mohan uh, dr mohan please uh, sir you need to stop sharing so that i can uh, start sharing uh, mohan sir yeah yeah you can start the slide Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, one second. Second, just a minute. Sorry. Yeah, not sure. You want me to share it? Or you can no, 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 sir. I have. I have. All right. Thank you. Yeah, we can see uh, Nitinji has joined. Namaste, Nitinji. Yes, sir. Yes. So, so few, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I was. It's uh, the other uh, nursing uh, function activity which was going on. So yes, kindly sir. excuse, but I'm so happy that uh, this yes, particular sir. session is going on, and with your support and the great support from our own university over here, and uh, the honourable VC, Pro VC, sir, Registrar, our all our deans, uh, Supraja Madam, of course, uh, she's the you know the energy source that we have over here for these activities. <laughs> Dr. Satyanara and uh, from the Department of Pharmacology, he's he's taken a lead, and uh, I'm so happy that sir, uh, you Raju sir, you are uh, you know taking it forward. And uh, Dr. Mohan sir, I would like to tell you, I know him for last so many years, and because you are Director of International Relations, the first time we met was in Thimphu in Bhutan, sir, and okay. it, it was a wonderful experience for all of us. So when they told me that uh, sir is uh, going to Be there, I said. Now oh, that's the best thing that we can be for our institute. Uh, really, we can become pioneers in this part of the country to take it forward. Sir. So, sir, so thank you very much. My best wishes to the entire team, sir. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks for joining with us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I, thank you very much. Um, first of all, I would like to thank my team, and the deans and directors and assistant directors who are part of the discussions. And um, out of the three days of MDP, I attended only two days, 
but it's really a very eye-opening session, I would say that, um, because I thought that I had lots of experience and I attended many management courses in my life, and um, I wasn't really convinced. Uh, I didn't want to attend the course originally. And uh, I think that um, Supraja spent about a few, I would say not minutes, probably a half an hour. Um, she didn't even convince me. She said very nicely, I think that's that's, that's where I liked it very much because she said um, that uh, this, this course is really different from other courses because I personally experienced that, that she personally experienced that. And she said, don't do anything, just please attend the course at least for a day. And if you don't want to, if, it, if there is no value for you as far as concerned, you can drop off and you can move on. And uh, and that really triggered me saying that there should be something in it. Let me give it a shot. So I thought that I would attend it. Um, because normally what happens in life is, you know, you have been here for about 50, 60, 70 years. You have gone through a lot of changes in life and you think, you know, you know, almost, you know, a lot of things in life because of experience and everything, right? But in this class, I felt that I'm a kid actually. I thought I have a lot to learn. And uh, there is always a Tamil proverb saying that Katra the Kaiman Alava, Kalla the Gulagalava kind of a thing. And, you know, but still I believe that it really makes me to think that it is a very uh, the the way to think, the way to analyze. Um the most importantly, the right understanding is very important. I think that, that really made me to really do a lot of things. Anyway, I don't want to waste too much time. I want to finish in 10 minutes. What are the next slides, please? Um, uh, agenda is key takeaways. Understanding developed through UHV changes observed in feelings and in thoughts, changes observed in behavior and work style, suggestions and observations about the course generally, and university-wide recommendation. So we'll spend more time in university-wide recommendation, some other things. The key takeaways, actually, the, the question when they ask me, are you happy? I always said I'm always happy. Almost at least 80% of the time, I was always happy. But still, when I think deep down, as because of probably I got more excitement and more sensation, I thought I was happy. And that was the perception of happiness at that time. Then the real true meaning of happiness means it has to come from inside. And whether it has got no difference between whether the physical facilities or whatever it is, it has to come from inside. And I think that it really, you know, if if I don't know, I don't want to bring in Vedantam here, actually, Bhagavad Gita here and everything, because it's really a, a what do we call religious neutral presentation. So I thought it's very important to say that, you know, you know a lot of things I learned in Bhagavad Gita is really, you know, consume, I mean, coming over here. The consumerism is another very big, important thing because I lived outside the country for quite a long time. And the consumerism is the way you grow the GDP. You grow the things, everything, you know, uh, and we believe in that, making it more efficient to produce something, making it do a lot of things, making people to buy more and more. So I thought that's a, that's the best way to do it. But after attending the class, I was thinking more time, you know, because see, you cannot rule out that having a Google, having Microsoft, you know, aspiring to be a, an IAS officer, aspiring to be is, is something wrong. It's not wrong at all. I think it's a very fair. As long as we can put a proper value in what the proposition you want to have in it. So for example, if I want to become an IAS officer, not to really have a, a power or, or money, if I have, a, I have an ability to serve more people, if you bring in that value in the, in the whole thing, it makes it more interesting, it makes it more reliable. For example, I want to become a CEO of Google. Nothing wrong about it, it's good aspiration. But the best way should be like, how do I serve by being it? for the community, for the human value. That is important. If we can turn the, the proposition from having a, a CEO of Google is not there to really have the, 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 the stock price to go up. It's like having, oh, I serve more people, more human beings to search things faster to do their job right. Then it makes sense to really to be a, be a CEO of Google. So so when, when I attend the class, I thought that it was going to really tell me not to do anything at all. That's not true at all. You can do all the work currently you do it, but make sure that the work is, is value-based or tailor it very correctly or think more specifically as to what value it brings you to the table, what brings the human, 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 chain, human value chain. And if you can think the whole thing correctly, I think that 
you know competition is good competition is not nothing wrong about it you know when you say compete you are not competing against somebody you compete against yourself if you know something like today you know i don't know how many of you play golf here if you play golf it is always you play against yourself if you have a handicap of minus 14 you want to pick up minus 18 Minus thirty-two, which is that is the way you want to. If you play a birdie, you want to do a birdie anymore. You want to make sure it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a three holes instead of two holes. So the whole important thing in life is you excel in what you do by doing more and more correctly. So if I can run a hundred meters dash in about say fifteen seconds or something like that, next time you try doing fourteen seconds, not to really compete against somebody else, but compete against yourself because you want to be good in what you do. So I think that. you know everything whatever we do in the world if you can think a little bit more properly except the consumerism part of it except the waste part of it we can really make sure that we can really do a, a better society going forward even the gdp gdp growth gdp growth you can question is gdp growth important or not no it, it may be sometimes important how to make it important by the value chain is very important how to make it the gdp you see then you have to go back and tell the president modi sorry the prime minister modi that you know sorry modi ji Sorry, so you want to change? Okay, GDP five point seven is now five point five. If you don't make it, it's also okay. You can say like that. You know what I'm saying? It is important that how do you really make sure that GDP can bring in value to the citizens of the country? That is important. If you can bring in a value, a social value, a human value, then it makes it important. It makes it very. The fitness of survival is a myth. I, that I know very well, hundred percent. value learning value based learning are very critical actually there's a slight difference actually i was reading a paper uh, given by somebody i don't know who i think given by supraja that says that uh, the, the difference between value learning value based learning and uh, what is it called that another word is called value living value living yes, value based living value based living value based living okay so i think that this is very important we want to really achieve that the yeah, value based learning soon in the organization so value based learning is not really about offering a course in in uhv uhv1 or uhv2 it is trying to bring a a a, a value based in every course we do the course content should be value based that is important and that's how you have to make it and that's really a challenge but we see what we can do on that on that area next slide please oh Oh, thought and there's a everybody talked about it a lot more. I don't want to waste time. Uh, I think something what I learned even yesterday is you know do not criticize or blame or something like that when the work is not done or it's not on time. Find the reasons calmly and then help with the individual to do it right. It is working very well in my family. It works extremely very well because I think the relationship with my with my wife has changed. You know, normally we used to really you know. Shower dog. Then we get we, we get to know each other after that after a while. But it's important thing is you know fine you know it's okay it's something wrong you know if I do it I think it's okay if somebody does it something wrong that we can think like that. So I think that's really true because my relationship with my children they are pretty old anyway they're thirty and thirty five and also with my family with my wife is really extremely it's, it's really enjoyable now. I thank for the for the professors and the and the AACT and the UHV coordinators. Are giving an opportunity to do that, including our vice chancellor. Okay, uh, suggestion. See that the, the MDP course, the first time course seems to be, and there are a lot of things need to be done in that course to, to make it more enjoyable and interesting. When he says somebody says enjoyable, means it's really a sensation, right? It's really something. I, I I agree with that. But if you want to learn something which is really important for your personal growth, the growth means the value based growth. And 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 the right understanding, you have to make it interesting. It is our duty to do that. The, the, the if it make it interesting, more people will jump into the bandwagon and will get the value out of it. So that is the, that is the important goal here now. Um, uh, few would present the results of, but I want to have some workshops. I want to have some case studies to be presented, and uh, I just want to make sure that some of the words we have used in that one, um, I didn't get the precise meaning all the time. Or I sorry. I did not understand the precise meaning. What I didn't, I don't understand the precise meaning of it because of my lack of understanding of the UHV or what of it is. I should have spent a more time on that one to really do it better. So the more number of days with short sessions each day will be even preferable. I thought then we can really put into practice and see how 
the, the learning really leads to really good human values and human understanding in the societal understanding. Next slide, please. I've got six more minutes, okay. Um, the, the whole goal is um, value education leads to value-based education, then on to the value-based living. Um, we at Asaram, we are doing a, a very good job in, 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 in UHV activities, but I think still we are scratching the surface only. Um, uh, we need to inculcate the value education to all of our SRM institutions and colleges. Actually, I would prefer to have the other SRM campuses and also the colleges within the SRM system to be part of it so that we can really be look at a holistic way of developing a, a, a larger population into this value-based uh, um, understanding. Incorporate HBE in the university vision and mission statements. I gave it a shot, but anyway, we'll talk about it at the, at the, at the end of the slides. Uh, strengthen our UHV team. I think that um, uh, if we need to go forward uh, with with more focused uh, way of inculcating the, the human values into the students, more number of students, more number of faculties, we need to have a, a very strong team. Um, so, and bring in a lot of volunteers. Um, because when you say bring in, a volunteerism is something you have to volunteer yourself. You cannot bring a volunteer because you don't, you don't pay for it, actually. And three to four hours of LDP orientation program in for chancellor and pro-chancellors and VCs and pro-VCs. I think this is very important. Um, I think VCs can help us in making it happen. We have a, I will have a chance to talk to them, one of the pro-chancellors soon. So I will tell them because in that way, I think they already know the value of value. I don't think that they already know some of it, actually. But the question right now is, if, you, if there is a direction coming from the top, it really makes us to really focus our attention and do a lot of activities based on that and then arrive at results a little bit faster and a little bit clearer. That's one of the reasons we want to develop, develop that one too. Develop evaluation process for competence and ability. This is very important. I don't know whether there is no proper, I know it's a self-evaluation, but there should be some guidance available in evaluating competence and ability as we go forward. Next slide. Conduct two regional conferences, one national conference and one um, regional, and say one conference should be in the local language because it helps the local people. There are a lot of local people here. We need to help them out at the, at least at the uh, bachelor or college levels over here in some of the deep south and, and, and other areas. So we need to do that. Strengthen the counseling process. To I think somebody mentioned about it this very nicely, actually. Um, the mentor-mentee relationship based on a good values, human-based values, then it will be very effective and last longer. Um, uh, I think we do have sometimes foreign students come in with lots of issues and problems without have a preconditioned mind of, mindset. If we can really address the issues properly and then make it happen, it will be extremely very good very useful. I think that one of the best values of, of UHV we can see right away is in the mental mentor relationship. And I also recommend to have that <clears throat> the mentee to be staying with the mentor for an extended period of time, not really like semester basis or yearly basis. It will help us a lot. A centralized repository of all UHV activities, resources, contacts, certifications, the feedbacks, if we can everything there and, 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 and structure it correctly, so that we can search it easily and get the get it is a lot more easier for us to for the, for the people to work on. So it is very important for that. You need help, so we need to provide appropriate help for that. So above all, I got two more minutes. Above all, I got a vision and a mission. I gave it a shot to give a, a, a vision statement to emerge as a world class university in creating and disseminating knowledge and providing students a unique value based learning experience. In we can leave inside we can in all disciplines and other AI scholarships that will best serve the world and the betterment of the mankind. So I think that will be a, a, a because if, if, the, if, the, if the vision or the mission does not come up clearly as, as a value-based institution, then it won't, it won't go further. So we need to really make sure a vision and mission statements clearly says like that. So it's not a lot of word. We can really, you know, even shorten some of the things because mission or vision should not be longer than about two or three lines. So we need to really shorten that one also look at it. 
and also the move of the international alliances and coalitions to achieve value-based global alliances. It's value-based, not really just saying, okay, it's been financially beneficial. It has our QSA being higher or something like that, not based on that, but based on what is the value we give it to the, to the, the customer who is a student or who is a faculty here. Accomplish a process. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's okay. It's okay. 39, I've got one more minute. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohan. Sorry, it's by mistake. Sorry, it's by mistake. Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, such a wonderful plan that you have made. And if it comes from the top, then things can change very fast. And if it uh, still comes from anywhere else also, it does uh, make a lot of difference. And you can see you have a very energetic team, a very uh, competent and energetic uh, UHV cell. So it is uh, very uh, much possible from wherever we start, but if we certainly do from the top with all your guidance and support, it will certainly make a lot of difference. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, we are out of time. Actually, we are already running out of time. So what we'll do is we'll skip the presentation by the UHV cell and the recommendations <clears throat> also, we will skip it for right now. And we'll go directly to uh, the VC. Uh, and uh, uh, after that, those of you who are interested, we will stay for the rest of uh, you know the things that we have not been able to cover in the main session. So uh, welcome, um, Muthamis Shelvanji. I'm sorry, I'm not able to pronounce uh, very uh, properly, but uh, 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 very good you? afternoon to all of you, especially to uh, Sri Astana and his team from ACTE and the UHV cell. Uh, my dear uh, colleagues, I'm very happy to know that all of you have undergone the three days MDP program organized by our university between 9th and 19th and 21st of October. So during the program also, I have been uh, hearing uh, the views of different faculty members and also their thoughts on how the program is going on. I just wanted to recall that uh, sometime in 2007, one of my friends advised me to undergo a, a yoga program, which is scheduled for about 14 days. It's for 14 days, two weeks in total. Uh, it was organized by one... Um, um, particular, uh, I should call that as an organization. I don't know to name the organization. So he was telling me a lot about the happenings in the workshop and therefore uh, that has uh, in a way motivated me to participate in that program. That program went on for 14 days and every day from uh, six o'clock to 7.30 in the morning. And the first and foremost thing that I learned in that was to respect each and every individual. When the program was supposed to start at six, it will start at six. Nobody can leave, nobody can enter. And likewise, when it is supposed to get over at 6.30, it will get over at 6.30. So the, uh, the first lesson that I learned was to understand the other human beings in terms of time management. Now, uh, I have been listening to all the presentations. You have been talking about the need and greed or the minimalism. The other thing is about listen. For a leader, listening is the best quality. If you are able to listen to some of the grievances or whatever somebody is sharing with you, 50% of the problem will be solved. In most of the cases, we, we react and we don't act. So if all the administrators can, administrators can listen to the challenges or the issues faced by our own colleagues or the students, that will be the first step where we can show improvement. While I was director of engineering and technology, I used to address all the first year students on the day of joining. 
And one of the questions that I ask them is, how many of you are really interested to join SRM and you have joined SRM? I could see only about 10 to 15 percent of the students raising their hands. So what does it mean? There is a long way to go for us. It is not the advertisements that we make. It is not the self-propaganda. It is how we value our students when they are on the campus and how do we treat them when they leave the campus. For example, we say we have 1.7 lakh alumni who have graduated. What is that we are doing with them? Are we still in connect with them? So these are some of the links. We, have, we always say that we don't have time to listen to them. That's one. Number two is the trust. Yes, freedom is given to everybody. Only when you give freedom, the responsibility should come. Now, that is very much in practice at SRM. And as a dean or director, you have your own liberty to bring in new ideas and implement those things. Now, does this percolate down the line to the HODs, to the faculty members, and to the students? That is a big question mark. Then the community connect. Somebody was mentioning about community connect. Uh, we have nine, uh, uh, sorry, seven villages adopted by SRM under Unad Bharat Abhiyan. Is it simply going there and doing some tasks and then coming back? I am not seeing any meaningful interaction with the community. It's a huge, it's a, it's a large university. We have so many faculties. Why not the faculty take up a particular village, adapt that village and bring in changes there? It is very much possible. We always rely upon a few faculty and few students to take up all this UBA work and something like this. So we should go beyond that. The other day I was addressing all our NCS, NSS program coordinators and uh, I didn't see that uh, there is value being added to the village or whatever the activity that they have been doing. So they have been forced to be a member of the NSS because that comes in the curriculum. So if it is not in the curriculum, whether the students will be a part of NSS or not, we have to see. So volunteerism comes from there. Then confidence in work, how, how much you are capable of executing your work, how much you are skilled, all those things. One act of kindness every day, mindful language was another thing that was pointed out. Right understanding, empathy. The, the, I said about uh, you should act and never react. Then respect and responsibility. So we should always we should always encourage students or faculty members who have been doing some work. And then that should percolate down the line. It is not just congratulating one or two and then leaving it at that point uh, and then uh, never going back to them and then asking them what they are doing now. Fairness and justice or transparency is one other thing. And then uh, having spoke about that. As Mohan said, we are our own competitors. Nobody else is our competitor. We always think to better others, but in reality, what we do is we always think to do better than others. For example, in the school, first rank, second rank. And do we celebrate our success? We can also view it in the different way, saying that in other words, we enjoy others' failure. So is it we are celebrating our success or enjoying others' failures is the other way to look at things. If you are enjoying your victory or whatever, that's different. But at the same time, you should never forget that we enjoy others' failures also. It is not that everything will be smooth. A lot of unpleasant things are bound to happen. Now, if unpleasant things are not happening, we will not learn anything. Or in other words, I can say, when an unpleasant thing happens, either you become wise or get wounded. Now the choice is yours. If it is wise, then you will understand a lot of things. You will not get into that again. You will change accordingly. You will learn a lot of things. But if you feel that you are wounded, you will never come back and then face all those unpleasant things. And every time when you happen to face an unpleasant thing, you will always feel wounded and never you will become wise. Then, after the pandemic, the World Health Organization predicted that the 
next is going to be mental health pandemic. You ask anyone, everybody will say they are stressed. Who is happy? That is the biggest challenge. And why we are not happy is the next one. Professor Gopal was mentioning about the minor degree in universal human values. Now, my own question is whether we should offer this as a course and make that as a compulsory. Compulsory in the sense you give them some credit or whatever and make them to come, prepare for them for exam and then give them some certificate. Should it be like that or it should be in a different way? In my opinion, there should not be any examination for such pro programs uh, offered under UHV. It should be a different type of evaluating the students. And then if they are true in that, then we should be in a position to give them a minor degree or whatever it is. I leave it to all the administrators to ponder about this and then come out with uh, suggestions. Now that senior admin administrators are trained like faculty mentoring about 10 or 15 students or 20 students, why not these administrators mentor 10 to 15 faculty members so that we can have a critical mass? So if we can mentor about 10 or 15 faculty members, then that will be about 200, uh, uh, that will be about 600 or so. So in that way, there'll be more number of faculty members who have been trained in UHV instead of asking them to go and take up a course and then give them a certificate that may take a lot of time. But why don't we do this? So I request all the administrators to uh, mentor about 15 to 20 faculty members in this UHV. And you are the leaders now. You are given freedom. So it is for you to implement. And the management is always there to support you. The other point is, we do not have any choice of situations, but we have choice of the expectations. But we always try to control the situation rather than having a choice of our expectation. So I strongly urge that, let us leave the choice of situation. Whenever it comes, we need to face it. That's what I meant by unpleasant things. But when the, your expectations are good, then there won't be any challenge. We can always sail through uh, easily. The other factor is whether we want standard of living or standard of life. Now, when you say standard of living, it is determined by the external factors. As uh, uh, Dr. Mohan said, we should always look at it inside rather than controlling the factors outside. When you talk about standard of living, it talks about the house you live, the, prof the job that you undertake, the salary you get, the car you travel, a lot of other things can be attributed to standard of living. But we all feel that standard of living is the best. But it is not standard of living, it is standard of life. Where standard of life is purely internal. It is an inner journey that we are going to perform. It is decided by the quality of work we do. We have about 6,000 employees in SRM IST. Are we all doing a quality work? If you all do a quality work, SRM will be in some other platform. The products that we make, here I'm not meaning the students, but how you mold them and all, that creates the biggest impact. That enhances the standard of life not only as a faculty or a staff, but for the students also. The work that we profess, are we doing it properly? Is that the required thing that we do in our job? The approaches we have towards the individual. Many of you are talking, uh, many spoke about this in the presentation. Compassion for others, the empathy, passion which the passion in which we do work. So all these attributes contribute to the standard of life. So instead of focusing on the standard of living, if you all focus on standard of life, all the things that you talked about UHV will fall in place. 
when we are uh, when we were about five years old or ten years old, as a child, we have been very happy. We never knew what is pain, what are unpleasant things. We have been always happy. When we became twenty years old, something dropped in. Thirty, some other thing. Forty, fifty, sixty it keeps on going like that. So what happened to those things now? So a person who is uh, who was sixty years and above wanted to understand what is the meaning of life. So he had been talking to all his friends to understand what is life. That too after sixty years, and then finally somebody told him that there is one sadhu sitting on that mountain. So why don't you go and ask that sadhu to understand what is life? Then this gentleman traveled for about 20 days and reached the sadhu. The sadhu was meditating at that time. And what we have been asked to do is whenever you see an elderly person, whatever, or a person whom to be respected, you prostrate. So this gentleman was not knowing how to prostrate, but in that process, he fell down. And with that, the sadhu got disturbed. And then he woke and saw this gentleman. And uh, this uh, gentleman immediately asked him, Sadhu, can I ask you a question? And Sadhu said, yes, by all means, you can ask me a question. This gentleman asked him, asked Sadhu, Sadhu, what do you mean by life? Sadhu was shocked for some time. And then he told the gentleman that life is like a fragrance of jasmine upon the gentle spring breeze. The gentleman immediately told Sadhu that all others are saying that life is bed of thorns. Sadhu immediately replied that it is how a person who told you looks at life. So I would like to end with this and I am very happy that all the senior administrators have undergone this UHV and uh, we would like to see a lot of difference in the coming months. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for uh, you know, such a precise uh, set of points which I think are very, very uh, perceptive. Education has to be for preparing the student for living, for life, and not just for the job. And that's what this holistic value-based education uh, is uh, uh, all about. And this is a baby step. You know, it's a very initial step, as was mentioned earlier also. But if we go from value education, that is adding uh, something, a new uh, perspective to the existing uh, education. That is first step. Second step after that would be value-based education, where all our subject matter is uh, soaked in values. So we have nature-friendly technologies, we have human-friendly management, and we are not teaching anything which is otherwise. So that step is a very big step to take, but that is the next step. And the third step is value-based living, which is uh, not only uh, you know doing the exam and things like that, but actually living like that. And what we see as the possibility in SRM is that uh, it is already working on value education. It can rapidly work towards value-based education. And the value-based living can be in parallel with the value-based uh, education part. Or it can start even now in small, uh, you know, small parts. So I think uh, uh, your uh, support is going to be, uh, support and advocacy is going to be, you know, immensely uh, uh, necessary and beneficial. And we thank you for your uh, for your thoughts and
your support for this uh, whole thing. Uh, and you rightly mentioned, you know, that COVID, post-COVID, this major uh, uh, possibility of uh, <clears throat> uh, the mental health being a major issue is already, you know, we can see that. We can see in the WHO reports, we can see that in, you know, obesity, in depression, in suicide, all three numbers are increasing very rapidly. Both the body as well as the self are in, uh, you know, trouble. If we see environment is in trouble, all that is happening, we can see that outside. But it, the journey will start only when we journey inwards. If we don't journey inwards, then the outward journey cannot solve the problem that is inside. So this, uh, what is being suggested or what is uh, being uh, offered is uh, what you are planning as SRM is something which has both parts to it. One is the inward journey as well as the outward journey. And they are complementary to each other. So within the, uh, uh, let's say the completion point would be the highest potential of a human being inside. That is realization of coexistence or realization of the, you know, what life is all about. And the outward journey would be in the expression as a human society, as a society which has peace and harmony around. So SRM can make a very significant impact on that. And uh, we are looking forward to, uh, you know, to all of you to uh, take it up and take it forward. And we are very happy to help in whatever way that we can. So thank you very much. Uh, yes, Suprajadeep, so we can uh, now so formally we break. Can uh, VC has a, a you know, one o'clock meeting, so <laughs> uh, but we will continue uh, with uh, the UHV cell takeaways and then we will have uh, uh, our recommendations and then we will hear all the uh, participants who could not share so far. And of course, I know that you would have lunch and you would have, you know, your classes. So those of you who would like to stay, please, you are welcome. And we will share the recording with you so that uh, uh, you can get back to it uh, when you have time. I understand we have gone quite over the time, half an, uh, 20 minutes over the time we have gone. Uh, but I hope that we have been able to meet the objective of uh, communicating, sharing, and uh, making the plans. Mm -hmm. So we will uh, uh, go with the next part of it. Uh, Suprajaji, please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'm so happy to represent uh, for the uh, on behalf of UHV organizing team, the takeaways from the UHV organizing team. So first of all, I acknowledge the whole UHV team who has formed. It is not by any compulsion here. It's just a purely volunteering. They volunteered themselves to involve in this. And they felt it is first for their self-development. And they have taken their own responsibility of the task. They have taken the task. They have all, they themselves have committed for the task. They said, I will do this job. I will do this job. They Everyone volunteered and none of them has been pulled in uh, based on the compulsion. So that was the first thing we could notice in the whole UHV organizing team. And the second thing is in the whole MDP process, not only just with this MDP program, we already uh, made two, three programs before. Uh, we couldn't see any complaints against each other. In fact, uh, we started complimenting each other. Like we could witness, we could witness in the whole um, organizing of this whole team. Uh, they are not creating any problems. Instead of that, if any problems or any conflicts comes within or any situation happen in that way, immediately we jump into finding out the solution rather than creating it like a bigger problem. So there we understood that none of the team has started working for a name, fame or the recognition. 
and they all put for a common goal a common goal for the self development a very first thing is a self development and which can uh, help for the societal development as well as especially we are uh, specifically working for uh, srm uh, now and the second uh, key takeaway from the whole team is we saw all the deans director head of the department and all the higher official by the position to date we have seen them as our heads and uh, by their position and their authority but in this mdp we just saw them as a another human being with no age with no position they are just a human being with a self uh, who is longing to understand oneself and to understand the purpose of their own existence so everybody is longing to find the answers for many questions which they had for so many years and they started with their exploration pro exploration process then uh, till dated we are all working with the information processing we got to hear a lot of information and just we work with that processing and i could see a level of exploration has been started and uh, this mdp as a whole uhp team helped us to test our own feeling within we uh, we see that we are committed and more responsible than before and sometime when we met we met in person we met most of the deans directors head of the department uh, just by sending mails they couldn't understand what exactly we are trying to do so we thought we go talk so sometime there was a favorable feeling which we receive and sometime it is but all these <laughs> helped us to understand uh, what we are also going through and collectively we the whole team uh, make mad made so much effort just because they all understand the essence of the program so that understanding essence is what uh, we felt it's much much important and uh, personally i can say uh, the transformation from i don't know what to do with my life that from that state to what all can, what all i can do with a, what all i could do with this life so that is the state we are in and uh, previously there was much hurry in learning things we used to learn things just to show that i know but now it's turned to learn to know things that is happening within our team and uh, we usually assume anything as just like information we receive a lot of assumptions with the information but now uh, we do a self exploration to understand ourselves and as well as other people and uh, last the time we spent with the resource persons rajul bhai akuma bhai and the whole resource person is really a great learning and uh, we really got a much clarity on the proposal and learn to be more responsible and committed towards the work we taken and uh, one personal realization in this whole uh, mdp is when someone is coming down and putting so much effort for my happiness and for my development and for developing my own understanding what i am going to do for my own self so this question i genuinely have the from the moment of mdp this is one bigger take away for me the realization of someone has come along all along to uh, give so much of uh, effort put so much of effort for my life and what i am doing it for me so that is where i stopped even eating the poga i like to put it that in this platform and uh, our final commitment from the whole uhv team we are here to support the whole university with all the future plans which they have and uh, whatever they want to implement and we are already making a progress and we commit towards a transformation that every one of us is desiring for thank you so much uh, for all your support right from the top management to the uh, akkas and now everybody in this whole institution i wholeheartedly thank you for each and every body who is supporting in this whole transformation process uh, thank you so much subhadri uh <clears throat> yeah see if, if one group can make so much of difference so your team is very uh, i think I, i wouldn't say your team but the srm team that is working on value education at the level that you are at is really something uh, commendable this uh, showing that even one individual with uh, that uh, spark can make a whole lot of difference and you have a whole team there so it's wonderful thank you for sharing your thoughts thank you bhaiya yeah we keep discussing you know we'll keep keep discussing further and further we will have that sure sure thank you yeah. okay
Um, now, in very uh, briefly, I will go over. Briefly means I will go over fast, actually, about what is it that we really aspire for? Why are we here? If we see ourselves, we are here because we want to be happy. As individuals, we want to be happy. And we want to be prosperous. So if you look at the collective level, those are the four goals that uh, we can see for ourselves, whether it is at the family level or whether it is at the you know, uh, SRM level or whether it is at the state level, country level, whole world level. This is what we are aspiring for. But unknowingly, we are making effort for you know, thinking that excitement is happiness. And with that, we are doing, uh, you know, various things which are uh, causing a lot of problems. So all the problems are essentially because we have deviated from working for our aspiration to working for an assumption which is not true. So, for example, Dr. Mohan mentioned about the survival of the fittest is a myth. So, we are working for so many myths and that is leading us to, uh, you know, where we are. <clears throat> so, in, if we are not making effort to realize our aspirations, we are certainly making effort to get rid of the problems. But if we are working for some assumptions, we really cannot get rid of our problems. They will not, that will not happen. So, for example, one of the SDGs is to uh, get rid of poverty. And the solution that is offered is increased GDP. But see what is happening. Uh, the poor are getting poorer. Their consumption used to be 2.5 whatever units they are. And that has decreased and the richest have got even more rich. Now, increasing GDP is not a complete solution. Not only has poverty remained, but there are many side effects also. So if we are able to see that our effort has to be for realizing our aspirations, then we will be able to make uh, effort for holistic solutions. Even for problems, we'll be able to make solution, uh, holistic solutions. So, it, do we have to work for GDP or do we have to work for ensuring all these things, you know, working for a system that aims for prosperity in every family? So, increasing GDP is one Prosperity in every family is another, uh, uh, you know, uh, another thing. So like that, uh, we have to see whether we can really uh, start working on holistic solution. And slowly these problems will reduce. And the society that we really aspire for, the kind of uh, uh, place where we want to be, what we really want to be will materialize over time. So, the systems to uh, realize this, there will be many systems, but the crucial system is the education system. The education system to, uh, to uh, ensure right understanding and right feeling in every individual. That system, if we have, that holistic value-based education, if we have, that will ensure this first one. And the first one will lead to the second, third, and fourth. Without the first one, the no matter how much we spend, uh, how much effort we make on the other things, it will not work. So, uh, AICT has put together a comprehensive uh, framework, a unifying framework. Unifying, I'm saying, because 
the components of holistic value based education uh, put them as three components one that is uh, helping the student to understand and have a, a a holistic perspective of life so that uh, is the first part what to do in life what not to do in life and is it existential or is it something that i have assumed so that perspective which is based on the underlying uh, harmony in existence so that perspective is first thing second thing is the reinforcement and exemplification of living with that harmony and uh, this nation has made very significant effort all over the world the effort has been there but uh, our nation has made very significant effort every state has made every region has made a significant effort so understanding that effort and taking inspiration from that that would reinforce uh, that living in harmony is not only possible we can do it that those two things will come out of that and the third part is learning the skills for living in harmony that is skills which are nature friendly technologies which are eco friendly and management systems which are human friendly that lead to mutual happiness so those this kind of framework is there uh, that uh, aict has developed and uhv is a crucial part of it um so we can go through the material that has been shared also so that is uh, uh important to see that you know whatever is being done is complementary the uhv and iks are complementary the uhv and the skills are complementary the values and skills are not uh, opposed to each other they are complementary so we have to do both both values and skills are essential and they are complementary and we can see that the priority would be more on what to do the value part and then the how to do will be uh, you know second priority but both are important both are complementary if the implementation of holistic value based education happens pervasively then the outcome the students will have you know all these attributes uh, for paucity of time i'm not going to go into all of them but uh, they will have a very holistic vision of life they'll be ready for life not just for the job they'll be responsible in their behavior responsible in their work they will have ethical conduct so all that uh, students will have i mean the graduates will have those qualities now from where we are to where we want to reach education also has to progress from where it is to value education first adding uhv and iks in the present curriculum then integrate human values across all the subjects and that is a very big step and then the third step is value based living which can happen in parallel with steps 1 and 2 slowly slowly that will happen value based living means i am not just thinking about it i am expressing it outside as well so this uh, progression is there there are uh, many courses that have been developed to initiate this process it's not something that will happen overnight so to initiate it uh, both uh, aict and uh, ugc and ministry and so many organizations are making you know their guidelines so we have to take uh, inputs from all of these and incorporate them um <clears throat> need you have already mentioned there is a need for all this so i'll just go into you know the specific uh, recommendations 
and keep it brief uh, at this point. Number one recommendation is socialization. Uh, whether it is meetings or celebrations or social events, this is something very important to ensure dialogue and meaningful dialogue with each other. So this is first thing. With that, a fully functional UHV cell. I was very happy to hear uh, Dr. Mohan's uh, mention about you know, the strengthening of the UHV cell. The UHV cell has to be every department, every, every faculty ultimately. So it won't be a separate cell. It would be the whole SRM would be a you know, functional uh, value-based organization. So there are specific things that you can do developing the library and resource center, preparing the faculty, staff, and all the stakeholders. Uh, Dr. Gopal mentioned about the family and the, uh, uh, the other stakeholders. That is very important to prepare ourselves. And if 100% of the faculty and staff are uh, at least oriented, that will make a lot of difference. Then implement courses and programs for students, which uh, you have already you know, taken up. Implement holistic human health course in the health unit. That is one specific uh, recommendation uh, because SRM is one of the first universities to take up uh, UHV in such a big way. So we are suggesting that you include holistic human health and uh, uh, what was mentioned about the four uh, levels at which you know in each professional you will have some programs that already includes that health course then orient counseling faculty also was mentioned that uh, you can have uh, there are already some experiments going on for example in the Bhutan Institute of Wellbeing. They have done you know, quite a lot of work on including UHV in their programs and they have very good results from 30% remission to 48% remissions in uh, two years was their initial uh, thing. I don't know how much it is now, but it is. they have made a lot of effort in that. So like that, there are uh, our counseling faculty can be uh, oriented in UHV, then they can develop a UHV-based counseling model or a counseling model which is based on self-exploration and a community. That socialization will improve the community. It will improve the uh, culture to be more responsible and more focused on uh, you know, the human aspirations. Uh, so, if the counseling faculty is able to go through all of this, it would make a huge difference. And ultimately, the counseling faculty uh, can aim for that there is no need for counseling because it is already ingrained in the education system. And you know, there is, uh, uh, you know, this uh, um, emergency uh, requirement is not any longer there. So that, uh, that is regarding the counseling. Then certainly we have to look at the impact and share the outcomes. Now, the impact of a thousand step process, uh, we should in expect the first step impact in the first step and not the hundredth step uh, impact to happen in the first step. So that uh, we'll have to See, we can see indicators, and you have mentioned so many indicators today. I'm so delighted that your uh, sharing was, you know, so uh, real and so much. Uh, um, we can see that you are exploring for real, not just uh, saying it because it is something that is nice to say. So it is something. You know, that we'll have to conduct impact analysis, which can be communicated properly. 
and then ultimately develop the institution into a UHV nodal center. A nodal center is number one, a living example of living in harmony, or it is at least working towards that in some tangible way. And it is making effort for the larger uh, society, for the uh, state, for the uh, uh, for the nation, and ultimately for the whole world. So that uh, I would stop there with the recommendation. There are a lot of details. There are some 68 slides in this. I won't go into all of that. But certainly I would say that uh, um, we can work on refining or finalizing the recommendations that have been made. And some of these documents can be useful. One is the document, uh, AICT document on UHV for holistic value-based education. And another document uh, which can be useful is guidelines for UHV cell. So these two documents can be quite uh, useful. But you have already done a, such a fantastic job that you might find that you can enrich these documents. Uh, and then go ahead with the implementation of your recommendations. Uh, and of course, uh, the program can be made more uh, developed further with group activities and projects and all those things. Uh, but we just have to keep in mind that uh, <clears throat> what appeals to us today is excitement. And harmony is something which is quite uh, unknown to us, by and large. So this effort is for harmony. And the excitement part might be missing from this. So if you can introduce some of that excitement also, that is OK. But ultimately, we have to focus on the harmony part. And uh, finally, I would say that uh, we are very happy to be of help uh, wherever required. And our, all our effort is voluntary. It is a pro bono effort. It has been received by us as a gift. And we are, our responsibility is to share it as a gift. And that's what uh, we are doing. So with that, I will close. Thank you very much. All the best wishes. Uh, yeah, like uh, we have few more participants. If they are interested, we can. Yes. Uh, um, the sir, Pushpalata, ma'am. Uh, if you like to share uh, your key takeaways. Uh, yeah. Good afternoon to one and all. So I'm representing uh, Group Seven, and my team members are Thapiban, Head Center for Yoga and uh, Kavita, uh, assistant professor in CDC, and Infanta from mechanical department. Um, my other key, 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 uh, sorry, key takeaways of this UHV program is, uh, after we had a discussion, I understood that uh, self-exploration has happened because we were able to get the values of ourselves. So that is the first key takeaway. And uh, second key, te uh, key takeaway is about uh, trust and respect because um, all of us unanimously have shared their uh, own experiences uh, in terms of trust and respect. So the very first experience, I think, with Infanta, uh, before attending UHP program, like uh, she had some pre-assumptions or some... Um, uh, preconditions in her mind pertain to her uh, in-laws but after uhv she has understood their feelings and thereby uh, the arguments or the uh, irritations have been minimized so that is what she has sh shared in terms of respect and uh, trust and uh, and coming to kavita uh, she after uhv program she has putting this uh, trust as one of her best practice um, with students, like uh, because initially all of us have, will be experiencing this because we always treat them that they are not respecting us or they are uh, 
uh, younger generation, therefore they don't have respect or they don't understand the values. But such preconditions need not be uh, in our mind when it comes to students because uh, we should understand if we have right understanding and right uh, feelings, I think uh, uh, they also uh, retaliate in terms of respect and affection. So that is her experience. And when coming to my experience in terms of uh, trust, uh, as said uh, by our dean also, like we have some preconditions or assumptions in our mind that are influenced by others' uh, feedback about one particular uh, faculty or something. So when they come and approach, uh, we understand, we doubt their intention. And uh, in, in, in my experience, uh, this had happened before I attended the UHP program, uh, that uh, his intention is something and thereby I reacted to his intention. And I didn't communicate later on. Then after completing my UHP program, I was about to meet him. Then was, and I was very casual and I was asking like, what about that initiative? What had happened? And uh, to my surprise, like his reaction was something different. Then he said, ma'am, I have sent a mail about this. But I thought like your little interest in that because uh, uh, some untoward incident ha had happened before. I said, no, nothing is in my mind. You can go ahead. So immediately uh, at the evening, uh, uh, that day, on that day itself, he has sent me a thanks message telling that, ma'am, you have rightly understood my feelings and therefore, uh, uh, thank you so much. So this was an impact I could see after uh, this UHV program because I, I made myself composed and I didn't react or get got, got irritated. And that way I could receive thanks message and uh, uh, people calling me and saying that, ma'am, you have rightly understood even in one of our difficult situation. So that impact we could see uh, being in a responsible position. And similarly, when it comes to respect also, uh, when we respect, that is what, when we respect others uh, and that the same respect will be given back to us also. So these two, uh, trust and respect seems to be a foundation value because the other feelings like affection, gratitude, love, all will come when we put this these two values into practice. So this is this we have experienced in our real life and particularly in this particular administrative position. And uh, coming to another uh, key takeaway is, uh, I think uh, Kavita has, has also expressed, uh, we didn't have a clarity uh, about the uh, value prosperity. So uh, now I, after attending the USV program, we clearly understood what is physical facility and uh, what is prosperity because now I feel like prosperity is a feeling uh, having more than required uh, physical facility. So... Uh, now I am very cautious when I want to do something or buy something. I am thinking twice whether I really need it or not, whether it can be shared to others. So this um, can be practiced even in workplace. When I get an opportunity, if I cannot do it, let it let me share to my uh, faculty so that they are taking the opportunity and uh, uh, faring well. So in that way, uh, prosperity is another key takeaway. And even Kavita and Patiban sir has also expressed this uh, because Kavita has felt that uh, she had more uh, physical resources when she was shifting her uh, house. And uh, now we realize and we think that with, we think twice whether we have to really acquire uh, physical resources, whether it really uh, required or not. So that thought process is in our uh, mind. Uh, so, uh, so all of us, all our team members, first I should appreciate and I should thank all my UHV coordinators because you were patient enough to handle us uh, and uh, you made uh, uh, our, uh, ourselves very in a comfortable position and you uh, ensured that assignment was submitted on time. So I have uh, taken taking it as a best practice from you all. Thank you so much. And uh, so I we strongly believe trust and respect is being practiced in workplace. Um, this will foster a positive and productive uh, environment. Uh, thank you for giving us an opportunity to attend this UHV program. And uh, thanks to all the resource person. Once again, I thank all my UHV coordinators. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much because like these are the vision we had last one year before when we started this UHV. So it's slowly, slowly happening. So, so happy to know that we're all in the process. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Steela, sir? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I acknowledge and appreciate the efforts 
uh, as well as the contributions made by our uh, team members. Uh, my team consists of uh, Dr. Shupraja, who is the UHP coordinator here, uh, Dr. John Thirubadigal, Dean Sciences, uh, Dr. Annie Butra, HOD of uh, Sintal Department, and Dr. Lakshmanam, Professor of Mechanical Department. Uh, actually, uh, starting uh, the UHV actually, actually has provided a lot of insights into uh, self explorations. Uh, it also taught about living in uh, living in harmony, and also reiterating some of the uh, aspects because many senior members are here. I think uh, most of them have a lot of experience, but we could not. Uh, test or we could not uh, find a place to uh, uh, experiment all these things. So it was a wonderful workshop for three days, which uh, we could share. And also some of the important topics which came to for discussions were uh, the clear uh, differences or the uh, uh, things like intentions, desires, because most of the time I was confused about desires and intentions. And also the topics like trust, relationship, and how society and nature are also important. Uh, for living in harmony. So uh, here I would like just like to highlight some of the small takeaways from my team. Uh, first of all, Dr. Supraja was uh, sharing about uh, uh, giving a small uh, sweet box and a thank note to one of the uh, housekeeping uh, person here after the workshop. Uh, the, the happiness of recognition was uh, seen in her face rather than the physical facility, actually. So it is basically a right feeling over physical facility. That is what many people uh, uh, in uh, uh, actually wanted uh, to, to be recognized. And also the other one is uh, uh, dependency to development, actually. Uh, most of the time we depend on uh, many people, uh, even in our house, uh, or we are scared about some of them. So we have to realize that uh, the process of uh, self-development also includes others for achieving the harmony in life. Uh, so this is what is actually dependent to development kind of thing and regrets to right evaluation. So we are used to actually over-evaluate, for example, the ego state and also under-evaluate some people. Uh, we should understand that it is actually basically because of the lack of competency. So most of the time we do not realize or accept our lack of competency. So that was reiterated in the workshop. And coming to Dr. Annie Butra, actually, you know that uh, many of us have in-laws in our home. Uh, we have to handle them because our actual expectation was to take care of them. Um, and uh, she has been doing it for a long time, but there are a lot of opposition states which has uh, occurred during the uh, lifetime. And the realization happened after UHV was, uh, it was a rela relationship or opposition. So we had to decide about it. So we had to understand that the relationship is more important than the opposition state. So living in harmony includes all other people also. And also the difference between want and need, which was discussed more in the workshop also, the position of physical facility, we should understand the difference between need and uh, want. It was very clearly stated. Uh, we have had a lot of examples also during the workshop. And re with regard to uh, one of other member, Dr. John Thirivudigal, actually he, he has mentioned that the affection is not taken for granted. So the thing is, uh, Professor made a physical visit after a long time uh, to aged mom. So she felt very happy after the UHV thing. Uh, Dr. John Thirudy also felt that uh, it, it should be a physical visit to the uh, to see the mom rather than just sending a note or calling or phone or anything. So the thing, uh, the great greatest takeaway is affection is not taken for granted. So it should be something like that. Then Dr. T. Lakshmanan uh, was expressing about how to make uh, his spouse happy. Now, whatever we do. So uh, it was actually a long time he, he was under the impression that um, he could not make her spouse happy in spite of whatever he does. But later on, during the UHV is taught that it is basically the lack of competency in oneself 
and we have to accept that, then we have to change accordingly so that automatically it, it will fall in place. So that is the uh, thing what uh, has given us. And uh, my experience, I uh, have two takeaways here. One is I clearly uh, found out the difference between desire and intention. See, basically my desire in, a, in my younger age was to become a doctor, basically. But I have become an engineer and now a teacher. So later on, I realized, even I think during the UHVA, I was talking to Supraj also, that I realized that my intention was to help others and serve people. Why, why to become a doctor and do it? We can do it with other professions also. So I, I understood that difference and I am very happy that I'm a teacher now doing that service. So I think I should thank the UHV team for making it very clear to me. The other important thing is, in spite of, uh, I read a lot of books on self-development and other things. Um, the difference between I and body, which was very clearly mentioned in the first day, because most of the time I used to make fun of my spouse during the group meetings with my uh, uh, brothers and other things. Uh, I realized after that sometime, uh, after that, that my spouse was not comfortable she she did not express that, but uh, later on I found uh, very clearly that she is another another soul. So we are actually uh, giving comments on the body rather than the self. No, I. So it is very important that the happiness is basically living in harmony with other creatures or other people around us. So and also uh, realize the importance of nature and the society altogether, which makes the survival for us and to being being unhappy. So I think uh, there are various other things, but uh, short of shortage of time, I just wanted to uh, overall this UHP, uh, UHP has provided a lot of insights of looking into ourselves first and understand the purpose in life. Uh, rather than taking uh, uh, um, other people as a, as a separate body or anything. So we should uh, understand that we all are one and uh, living in harmony with others and other creatures will make us uh, achieving the human potential altogether. So thank you again, once again for UHP and also the team for providing an opportunity. Thank you. Awesome sharing, sir. Wonderful sharing and so honest and realistic sharing. So. Thank you so much. Like it, we are helping each other to develop, and we're all in the process of doing it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Yeah, and, and getting the difference between uh, intention and desire is a very deep thing that you've got. It's very nice for sharing that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Suman, ma'am. Hello. Good afternoon. Am I audible now? Oh, yes, you are audible. Please. Oh, thank God. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So I'm representing from Medical and Health Sciences Group 2. My team members are Dr. T.S. Vira Godaman, sir. Or Dr. Uh, sir your slide is not shared. Is it fine? I'm It's okay, fine, ma'am. If it's okay. okay, yeah, sorry. So, uh, my team members are, um, as I said, Dr. TVS, Vira Godaman, sir, Dr. Chitra, ma'am, uh, Dr. N. Uh, Namodran, sir. Dr. Sonalata ma'am, Dr. N. Nalini ma'am, and myself, Suman Kanoja. I have a uh, few sharings, uh, briefly, I will say, so, in which is in a uh, concise way. So, one thing that group member all together, these are the kind of takeaway from and the experiences the group member have felt some or other way and has experienced. So, one thing is like unconsciously, we are all vigilant to our own action rather than focusing on the other factors or so this has been uh, we have been able to make better relationship at home and workplace 
uh, with our spouses, children, uh, colleagues. The other takeaway and that has helped us in uh, our relationship and we were able to see the changes for bridging the gap. So earlier, whatever we were desired for and what we were looking for was not matching. But after this workshop, this gap has been bridged. And now we are able to see what we were looking for versus what we are capable for and able to make the realistic evaluation, more or less. The other is the empathy that we are able to uh, see or put ourselves into other shoes. And that has made a lot of changes in all aspects of our, our life. Now we have a better reflection and we are able to see ourselves that what are the preconditioning and what are other, other our assumptions. So in day-to-day -day life, we unconsciously, we are able to see or that no, what we are going to see or the action we are going to take action is maybe earlier it was based on the preconditioning, but now we are able to see that what is this preconditioning or assumption is there or was there. We are able to, because of these reflection and vigilance, unconsciously, consciously, we have been able to analyze better the purpose and sources of our desire and able to respond accordingly and precisely uh, with a better or right understanding. Increased frequency and quality in our dialogue has increased uh, with family members and colleagues with the intention of build capacity. So because of this, there's a less argument, more quality dialogue, or at least no no uh, argument if it is if there is no dialogue at least the harmony uh, we have been able to feel and uh, realize that what if it what it is able to and experience at a constant level it is not one time so this has helped us understand whether it was the sensation or the excitement versus harmony so for the first time i would say for myself i was able to feel that harmony and this is constant since after the workshop. We are able to make better decisions, choices, um, because we know what is a sensation, what is excitement, what, what will bring harmony, what will bring happiness, whether it will be a physical accumulation or not. So based on that, we are unconsciously, we are able to make a better decision. And this has led also to the minimalist, that we are able to better uh, think for example, if I say for myself, I'm, be, I'm able to uh, reduce my cravings for food, for certain kind of food, or uh, this is one of the example, or the wealth accumulation of wealth, then increase in well-being, so better food choices, uh, better physical activities. Now we are more able to focus, focus on health. And although some of us feel that struggle with self is still there, but that we are not stuck with that struggle but we are working on the proposal and verifying it and working on the self-improvement and development with the right understanding. Um, so one example I would say that earlier um, in Deepavali, uh, we used to have so many spending a lot, but this time, um, although I used to do something, but this time the whole spending that we used to do in Deepavali I donated to one of the NGO uh, child care institution where orphan kids live. Uh, this was again, I was able to do it and I was able to do it with, um, with harmony and better sense of uh, contributing to the community. Um, the one thing that I, my son has always, that I would like to share, he has always wanted to have a pet. But then I kept telling him that, you know, with my assumption that you are young enough and you will not be able to take care of it. So unless you are grown up, then we will have. But I realized this was one of my assumptions that he may not be able to take care of the pet. But once I have given him a pet, he's, um, he's just shown that how capable is. So I realized that responsibility doesn't come with aging or uh, with designation. It is we become responsible um, so thank you. This is the sharing from the group. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was wonderful sharing that uh, we everybody is validating ourselves to see uh, the list of assumptions we make every day, and it is happening and it is helping us. Like to in this exploration process, we could 
uh, seen what are all the mistakes we did <laughs> till date. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Uh, yeah, very nice sharing. As uh, I mean, I'm quite amazed that everyone who has shared has been exploring, and which is uh, you know very nice. Uh, I can see LRGS is there, no, sir, is there, <laughs> and we can't complete no, no, this yeah, uh, without uh, LRGS. <laughs> what happened, sir? <laughs> Am I audible, sir? Yes, sir, sir, LRGS, sir, you are yes, perfect. Yes, ah, so just I was eagerly waiting because uh, the physical one I'm missing now. So all of us enjoyed this uh, UHV. Thanks to all uh, members and, and the team. Uh, three days was wonderful, sir. But physically, this is uh, today we are having online. So that is missing. So if it is in the uh, offline, uh, like what we are, I think it would have been uh, more interesting. And the other one is whenever uh, that uh, hall, uh, everyone was speaking here online, and uh, the mic was a very interesting factor uh, because. They gave me three mics uh, to <laughs> to stand in front of me. So whenever whenever I want to speak, uh, they gave uh, freedom for, for me. So I hope uh, that is I'm missing. So uh, otherwise, uh, the online uh, one uh, we are doing it here, but physical only is giving more uh, huge touches. Uh, so that is what uh, I still feel. Online is uh, only a uh, support. Uh, that is whatever discussion we are doing it here. It is only a support, I would say, uh, but still, uh, if it is in the physical mode, uh, yeah, everybody would have enjoyed. See, see, I am seeing here, slowly that uh, uh, people are going away. So if it is in the physical mode, nobody can go outside. Uh, so here I am seeing uh, from 68, uh, this has come down to around uh, uh, half of it, uh, I think. Uh, and also, I am not able to see whether all of us are... Uh, Enjoying that uh, noise, I'm not able to hear. <laughs> All those are missing factors in this uh, <laughs> online one. <laughs> that is what, but UHV, sir, overall, I would say it has given me uh, enough opportunity to self explore and then uh, not only in uh, work environment, in home, in all uh, parts of my life. And I feel that uh, whatever uh, everybody have this type of uh, exploration uh, going on. Uh, but this UHV has helped us uh, to know that there is an exploration uh, there, self-exploration is there. What is the mean by, what do you mean by trust? Uh, what is that happiness? Uh, what is it mean by prosperity? All uh, sorts of information has uh, opened the mind. So I would say, just like in a dam, when you're opening the flood uh, the, the gates, the water gushes out. So that is what this UHV has now uh, uh, made, it is just to open the shutter of our uh, mind and uh, this is now all our thoughts are now like a uh, water which is gushing out. So I hope uh, it will reach to the end uh, and then it will also be useful to everyone in this uh, process, sir. So this is what uh, from my side, sir. I would like to thank everyone, sir. Uh, Professor uh, Rajul Asana, sir, and also Dr. Supraja, madam, and all uh, the uh, faculty. Yes, sir. Gauri yeah. Shankar ji. Yes, sir. All, all. And all, Umesh sir. ji came before that and Sunil Kumar <laughs> came before that. But uh, all of us are uh, in the yes. same, this thing, you know. We are all co-explorers. Yes, sir. So that is what, sir, I just uh, finally, I am happy that uh, you have all given me an opportunity to speak. Eh? I'm waiting from 10.30 from the morning. So finally, <laughs> <laughs> thank you all, sir. <laughs> thank you, sir. So yeah, we are yeah. so happy to hear from you, Sinas. Yeah, we are waiting for your turn. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We are looking forward for a lot of support, sir. We will be pestering you a lot. Yes. So, uh, if any other sharing from any of the participants would like to share, anybody wish to? Uh, so, Prajada, ma'am, I would like to say thank you to the entire SRM team and uh, our facilitators. It has been really a journey. I thought, you know, once people reach to a certain level of position, 
will be having less struggle for example if they are already in workplace or in like they have become to grandparents like that there will be less struggle they will be more settled they will be having more understanding but i was strong and i realized that everybody was struggling with some or the other way mm-hmm. and and this realization has made that like at whatever level we are we need have we have a lot to learn and explore and settle with ourselves um thank you so much for the entire this and supriyata ma'am especially to you if i wouldn't have received that one single email from you about the weekly meeting i wouldn't have been here and experience what i have experienced thank you so much thank you so much um to our facilitators so asana sir and kumar bhaiya uh omesh omesh bhaiya uh, you would like to say few words for us because you have been a constant guidance uh, for srm uh, from the workshop so in personal for me much uh, the efforts you are putting for my development and uh, like many things many guidance still there thank you so much for that uh, i'd like to hear from you a few words yeah welcome all the akkas and annas welcome <laughs> bhaiya it's been a marathon meeting started at 10:30 and True. it's like 5 minutes to Two o'clock, but that is what generally happens, you know, when we talk about our own self. So we can keep discussing, we can keep understanding each other, we can keep helping each other, hours and hours and hours. Um, I remember, you know, the twenty ninth of May, first time I came to SRM IST campus. Uh, that thirtieth uh, of May to fourth of June was five days. UHV to workshop, and during that workshop, what I realized, I mean, few takeaways from that workshop, uh, my observations about university and the people in the university, like every single person I interacted with, was extremely kind, supportive, and helping, starting from the airport pickup to the airport drop. Number two, like often. you know i go to different universities different colleges uh, gets an opportunity to meet with chancellors vice chancellors deans and directors while walking towards vice chancellor's office i cross the chancellor's office and i saw at least 50 to 70 people waiting outside in uh, outside the chancellor's office and just out of kira city because when i looked at those people i could recognize that they have nothing to do with the educational institutions or campus uh, so i just asked supraja didi who all are they and then supraja didi uh, informed me that they are the villagers and they are here to see chancellor and seek some help from the chancellor I mean, that is something great that is something great so this values this vision is there from the chancellors to the management to the administrator what is happening through universal human values it's just getting little organized and uh, you know i am able to see that uh, impact of organized efforts towards value education and now each one of you is talking about value based education value based living living uh, i'm sure by this time uh, there is a talk on values and value based education in every single cafeteria and the lab of your campus and uh, to uh, you know enjoy all those talk talk to meet you all uh, ai city has provided this opportunity so from december 12th to december 16th uh, you are hosting a university coordinators and the coordinators uh, uhv2 ftp uh, a while ago uh, lrgs bhaiya has mentioned that uh, it's always good to have a face to face interaction so yes bhaiya you know we are coming again to your campus uh, from <laughs> of uh, december and uh, you know i take this opportunity to invite you all for that uhv2 workshops so you can register and enroll because you all are eligible and qualified for that so uh, you can come there for five days 
and uh, we'll have uh, interactions in all the length and the width uh, during that uh, FTP. Uh, basically, you know, it's a very simple thing. What do we want as a human being? Only two uh -huh. things. We want to ensure that harmony within and we want our body to be healthy. If we fulfill these two wants, then rest all wants get naturally fulfilled. If I'm in harmony within, I can interact with every human being around me harmoniously. I can participate in the enrichment of nature. But that preconditioning, the sensations, the kind of imaginations, the accumulations we have, sometimes uh, makes the life very complicated. So as being mentioned by Vice Chancellor Sir, that it's very important to think about the quality of the life and not only just quality of living. And uh, in person, personally, like this UHV is helping me to explore both this part, you know, my quality of life and my quality of living. And uh, listening to the sharing of every single administrator of SRM University, uh, in three days, you know, each one of you were able to explore I, mean, I was amazed to listen to Dr. Mohanji. Uh, he missed one day, attended the uh, FDP for two days, but uh, narrated the whole essence and the core of FDP uh, very nicely. Uh, so a lot of complications are there, the complications of our own uh, misunderstanding, the complications of our own uh, wrong feelings, or the lack of feelings, I would say, the complications of our own uh, not naturally acceptable thoughts. So it takes a lot of time to purify. And um, uh, UHV team is support, you know, providing this continuous support. Uh, like we uh, have morning sessions. So currently the eighth batch of the morning session is going on. And in the January, uh, there will be the ninth batch. The ninth batch is starting from 1st of January. And I expect and hope that um, all the administrators of SRM University will join that uh, morning batch. I mean, it's six to uh, seven in the morning, a very convenient time. Sorry, so yeah, six to seven in the morning, 5.30 to 6.30. Yeah, 5.30 to 6.30 in the morning. So very convenient time for each one of us. And um, uh, from UHB team, we are having this expectation that all the uh, deans, directors, and the administrator will join us for this morning sessions, starting from the 1st of January, uh, 2024. So thank you um, very much uh, for giving me this opportunity and uh, very eager to meet you all. Thank you. Thank well, you. We are also looking forward for December 12th and uh, see you soon here. Uh, we will have a fruitful discussion and which always strengthening our exploration process. In fact, I yesterday missed your meeting. I really felt after seeing the messages. So we, we used to to get a lot of, uh, uh, we are developing and you people are helping us a lot. And in this process of mutual development, everybody's getting fulfilled. Thank you so much, Vaya. Thank you so much. Uh, any other sharing? Or Gauri, sure, you want to share something? Or... Mom, it was a very good experience to meet uh, a variety of flavors at uh, SRM, meaning uh, <clears throat> different people with different assumptions and uh, uh, of course, uh, LR sir, LRG sir, uh, I've become a fan of him, and uh, it's a good opportunity to uh, be at another institution and uh, learn from there also. So this is what I see from this UHV, madam. Thank you, yes, thank you for the UHV team uh, to uh, provide me an opportunity in such platform. Thank you, thank you so much. Sir. So we all together make SR region also. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, we are work for it's not just for our university. We are ready to work for every single university. We are open to that. Thank you so much for joining with us. Welcome, welcome. Uh, Dr. Mohan is the senior most over here, I think, <laughs> as far as I know. So, uh, if Dr. Mohan would like to say something, we'd be happy to hear closing remarks. Thank you, my dear. Okay. Okay. okay, then we will, uh, then we can close for today and yes. we will meet again 
in UHV2 or some other forum. Uh, what I would suggest is that we have uh, a follow-up meeting, regular follow-up meeting with uh, this group, whoever is interested. Uh, uh, updates can be shared and uh, you know some content can be shared. So if you are already having a weekly meeting, uh, uh, the administrators can also join that meeting or they can have a separate meeting. And of course, the morning session would be the most uh, important session if you can make up, uh, you know, make time for uh, for one batch of that morning session. It goes for four months, so it's a commitment for four months in the morning from 5:30 a.m. to 6:30 a.m. So that will help to take uh, the inner journey. Uh, you know, to facilitate that inner journey. And then we will have uh, UHV 3 and UHV 4 workshops in the near future, maybe in February, March. Uh, we will have those workshops also. The UHV 3 workshop is uh, more about the self, and the UHV 4 workshop is more about the human society. So these two workshops will be very useful uh, for all of all of us. So with that, I'll uh, close over here. I thank all of you again, particularly. Yeah, we personally thank you a lot because so much of patience and the efforts you are putting for us uh, for our university it's unremarkable. I couldn't. I don't have words to say because I spend a lot of time with you. Uh, like a uh, past two weeks it's almost every day two to three hours we have a lot of discussions and uh, i know how much effort you're putting for the whole uh, society and especially I could witness for my own university and for my own development and thanks each and every one of the uhv members who are really putting so much of effort to bringing this harmonious um, harmonious in every single individual so my sincere gratitude to every one of you and all my faculty members who are really supporting us from the top to um, every single person inside this university who are really into this process and helping in every moment. I personally take a moment to uh, all the way to say that a gratitude to everyone. Thank you so much, Baya. And thanks everyone for joining with us and uh, staying with us for so long discussion. And... Uh, Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Namaste.